Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is episode 172. I am joined by uh, longtime friends, actually. Um, you may know Spencer Lappin. He's been on once or twice. Do we know how many? It's got to be close to 15 by now. I don't know if it's God, 15 it's, or not. It's, it's got to be close to that. Rick Flair. Yeah. Yeah. But he's been on several times before, been a big supporter. Uh, love having him on. We usually have a pretty good time. And tonight we are also joined by a longtime friend. We just call him Wilk. Long, long time, first time. Yeah. First time on the podcast. Thank you for coming, Wilk. Do you want to call him Wilk or what do we want to call him? Jake. Jake. All right. I'll probably call him Wilk. That's fine. But uh, Jake Wilk, oh, if you didn't put that together. My name is Jake Wilk. Nice Jake Wilk you. is here uh, all the way from Michigan. Yes. <laughs> That's where I'm from. Perfect. It's going to be a great one. Yeah. Um, before we get more into this uh, in-depth conversation that started, uh, I want to thank our sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton, for uh, sponsoring us with the Herrera Esteli Brazil, which is what we're going to be smoking tonight in the uh, as a featured cigar. And also their support uh, throughout the podcast as well. Columbus, Ohio, we appreciate it. If you guys are interested in the Herrera Esteli uh, Brazil this week, between now and the next podcast, it's going to be 15% off of the Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio. You can also get a mailed to you if you just want to get a hold of them at the store, Easton Tinderbox at gmail.com, and they can help you out with that. Also, all the makers, as you can hire Romeo E. Julieta, the Monte Cristo, we've got uh, H. Upman. And many others, including what do we have tonight? The uh, Romeo Julieta Reserva Real Nicaragua. Great medium bodied cigar from AJ Fernandez. So we want to thank you guys at Altidus and uh, Josh Bentley for all the support over the last several years. And also BS Cigar Company. I got a BS Silver somewhere in the garage or maybe it's inside. But uh, they are in stock at the Tinderbox at Easton as well. And Columbus, Ohio, the BS Cigar uh, Gold and also the Silver. So check those out as well. And thank you guys at BS Cigar Company for the support. Other than that. Spencer, what have you been up to, man? It's been a while. It's been a while, man. Uh, I think this will go along with our subject tonight. It's kind of going back to normal here, man. It's uh, It just feels like there are, like you said earlier today when we were just talking, uh, it feels like a, a switch has been flipped. Yeah, magical. Uh, I, scientific <laughs> switch, magic have science. you read the CDC release? <laughs> I do not. Not a whole like, lot of I don't of like facts. to read a lot. I like to listen to stuff <laughs> yeah. if I can. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah but just... Uh, you're a your podcast guy. I'm a podcast yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah. If, it's well, on a, if it's not on a CDC <laughs> when podcast, you hear this one, you'll, you'll learn a lot about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. It's not on two speed. I don't listen to it. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, working and stuff like that, good to see Jake in town. You know, we're going to play a little golf here the next couple of days. Nice. And, uh, obviously, good to see you and good to see the fellows in the audience again. Absolutely. And, Jake, uh, they don't know you very well. Yeah. But uh, how has your 2020 been? <laughs> In a nutshell, before in a we get nutshell. into part, yeah, before part we get two. Too, too deep. Um, but you moved up to Michigan because you you used to live here in town, right? Yeah. So I lived in Columbus for about twelve years. Um, became good friends with both these guys throughout random circles of mutual friends, playing softball, golf, all sorts of things. Some good nights out drinking and watching football during Sunday fun days. Um, very big staple at uh, Bar Louie downtown, circa like. 2013 through 2016 that's right, that's right. You know, a lot of good year for them yeah good hey. year for them yeah and the, the wings were terrible but that's okay um but yeah i moved to move the kids back closer to family back in uh late 2017 and uh yeah 2020 was a beast um lost my job in april of 2020 and we'll get into that a little bit mm -hmm. and just kind of figuring out how to be a stay-at-home dad and stay positive for my little guys but then also try to find a job at the same time and not be desperate on interviews after interview after interview and uh, a lot of life lessons learned there. And, and now, yeah, just picking right back up, I guess, you know, we're, my wife and I are in the process of uh, buying a new house and getting the kids ready for school in the fall and just getting back to normal, hopefully. So it's been a heck of a year. I'm looking forward to sharing some things with the, with you guys and with the audience tonight, just some life lessons learned over the past year for sure. That's fantastic that you guys, as a family of like kind of stuck it out and i know yeah it's what you expect a lot of times but this yeah. this has been tough for a lot of people so that's that's awesome to hear yeah no i mean we've definitely come out on the other side you know surprisingly better than i would have thought going in if i looked at it knowing what was going to happen in 2020 and even the first part of 2021 uh, which we'll talk about too and uh and yeah it's it's we've definitely come out strong i think the foundation is is a lot of trust and a lot of communication and just knowing you have a good partner and a good unit around you and, and uh, a lot of love and just still trying to find ways to make memories despite maybe some shitty things going on in the day to day 
try to separate the two and compartmentalize so that you can bring that positive energy home to your partner, your kids, wherever, whoever you might be interacting with. Um, that's definitely some things that I've tried to make a focus. You're welcome. Did, did you uh, name okay. your son after Tony or did Tony, the dog get named after your son? Yeah. I, Who I, came first? Yeah. Well, Tony, my son was born, uh, in 2016, uh, the morning after the Cubs won the world series, by the way, Stevie. Um, so my friend who's a, a good, good Cubs a good, fan, good yeah, week. you're welcome. <laughs> that's um, a good week. So my, my really good friend who's a Cubs fan asked me if his middle name was Rizzo because I named him Anthony, Ooh, I like that. Uh, which was cool. Um, but yeah, I stayed up way too late watching game seven. Uh, I remember it vividly. And uh, we were here in Columbus in uh, UA Hilliard ish area. And uh, we were on the road to the OSU med center the next morning by about five fifteen to give birth to my second born. So did you stay up for the extra innings? I stayed up the whole game. That's yeah, good. I stayed up the whole That's game. Good. So it's I was called dedication. Yeah, I mean, I was a parent already, so I wasn't sleeping as it was. So it's just a matter of you know rocking on three and a half hours sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, just for a good excuse for a historical game seven and anything to beat the Indians. Yeah, so, I don't well, remember yeah, that yeah, game. You're welcome. I, yeah, very well. I was hammered. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys crying during the rain delay. I was like, this ain't good. Yeah. Weren't you standing out the gates at Progressive Field trying to get in? I was protesting the yeah. Chief Wahoo, if I recall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, perfect. It's the Jake. Button. Um, I want to also, before we get into the cigar here, I want to thank everyone, including uh, Spencer, who's on uh, camera here for uh, Patreon.com. I forgot to say that earlier, but uh, Patreon.com slash Bird and BS Podcast. Uh, great for you guys to support us, and we can do one more. We already got it set up. Nate's got it set up. And for those that are asking where Nate Hale is and that glorious beard, what's left of it? He is actually in the producer chair tonight because it is tough, as he said in the comments already, to have four people at the table. So we appreciate uh, him allowing both these fine gentlemen to be on camera. Thank you. You've done a great job. He's got a mic. Don't worry. He'll, he'll get in. So those asking, well, who is it? Ian? Yeah. Gentleman is the operative term, though. Right, right, right. We have a meeting there. He said, damn, where is the Russian contingent tonight? So, yeah, we're going to have to get your ratings still. Don't worry. Smoking the cigar, drinking the whiskey. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead. What were you going to say? You were leaning in like you are going to say something. I, I've just noticed over the weeks, you know, he, he's really hot or cold with the judging from what I understand. It's, There's a lot going on. Yeah, it's like a seven's a good, but nine's really good. But five, if it's a five by me, it's not not the end of the world from what I understand. What was right. the one you had a couple weeks ago that you did not like? It was, what, sand or something like that? Eight and sand. Eight and sand. Eight and sand was. It wasn't good. That being said, let's uh, get into... Wilk, you brought us Buffalo Trace. I did. Uh, but it's not just any Buffalo Trace. This is something that you picked up a while back, actually. It was, it was pre-COVID shutdown, if I recall. Is yeah, that right? It was, it was mid. It was May 2020. I looked back. Okay, at, so it was right yeah, around Yeah, that two time. months after everything yeah. kind of shut down. Yeah. Local, uh, local grocery store chain nearby me, um, they have a pretty good beer and wine and liquor guy. Um, and he put me on saying, hey, we just did a barrel pick down at Buffalo Trace, um, and we'll be getting it in in a week or two. And then I got the email reminder, texted these two guys saying, hey, my local shop is getting these. Would you want me to pick you up a bottle? This was, mind you, 13 months ago. Um, and they said, Stevie said, yeah, give me two. And uh, Spencer said, please bring me one, I think, for free. I think is what you said. Thank you for the bourbon. You're welcome, Appreciate You're welcome for the bourbon. <laughs> so I've been sitting on these Thank in, my, you for in these. my basement for for. Like I said, about the last 13 months, it was tempting to, you know, break into one. But I was like, oh, I'll bring it the next time I come to Columbus. And then we didn't do anything for the last year plus. And, uh, and now we're here. But happened to be a happy occasion to come down and open them up. And open we haven't seen up. each other in person for almost two years. Is that right? Yeah, at least a year and a half. I was yeah. down here last winter pre-COVID. Um, okay. And then definitely like the fall pre-COVID as well, like that August, right around like Southie Film Fest time, that mm -hmm. like 2019. We did like a year. Zoom for like the NFL draft or something like yeah, that. Yeah, we Zoomed over the drafts. Yeah. Last, but, not this last draft, but yeah, 2020. Exactly, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, but the last time I was physically in Columbus regularly was I think once in the late summer, early fall, right before the football season started. And then again, after the new year, I believe. So Jake, we were talking a little bit earlier. Um, Buffalo Trace, for whatever reasons, it's, it's difficult to get here in Ohio, even though the price point is... I don't know what's what's the price point on something like this. 
So under, under, under 30. 30 bucks and it's still pretty difficult to get. So in Michigan is Buffalo Trace, not this particular single barrel, but just in general, is it easy to get or is it pretty scarce? Yeah. I mean, I still see it on the shelves pretty regularly. Do you really? Yeah. And uh, I didn't realize happening here. I didn't realize the scarcity was was happening. I, I also don't think y- y'all got weed. Y'all got bourbon. It's a nice deal. Gambling. Yes. Yeah, gambling. Yeah. We can do sports betting, too. So come on up anytime you want. Um, we're only about, it took me literally under three hours to get here today. So, you know, the roads are open. Um, it's not bad. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, I didn't have any problem getting it. And I was actually late jumping on this cause he, I knew about it a week or two prior to it hitting the store. I was like, shit, I forgot to go grab that Buffalo trace. I ran out one morning. It was like a Friday morning. Um, wasn't working at the time. So that made it easy to, you know, not have to worry about pros things. and cons, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's go spend, you know, hundred bucks on bourbon you know, free on when, you, when you don't have a job. Yeah. It's felt <laughs> good. Um, but uh, yeah, Check there was, schedule. there was, this had been released. I think like there was no lines waiting for, it, I guess this is the thing, like, I guess the markets may be different and yeah. there's not as big of a fervent so even, following, you know, even being a barrel pick, right. It wasn't as like there lines were, out the door. No, there were six bottles left on the shelf and I got three of them and wow. I could have bought more. I guess. And he's, he was able to buy three. Yeah. Yeah. Which is different. What, what's the Michigan ones that you guys have had on the podcast before? Some of the Michigan bourbons. Traverse City. We had Traverse City. We had uh, New Holland stuff mm-hmm. um, when, when Nook's been in town. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was from New Holland. Yeah, so we've had some from, from some of the distilleries up there, which we still want to go visit. Yeah. Um, Get which, some cherries. Yeah. The Traverse City, actually, I think they sent with uh, the samples, they sent some of their cherries with it. Yeah, yeah, they have a cherry finished one as well, Traverse City. So, um, but you said this is a, a decent size liquor, kind of a. Um, yeah. Is it a grocery store as it's, well? It, yeah, it's a grocery store chain, but they're like a a lighter version than like a Giant Eagle Marketplace, I guess, for comparable. Okay. Like, it's not as big as like a Giant Eagle Marketplace, um, but it's it's definitely got that similar kind of bougie ish vibe. Um, you know what I mean? Like a little. Yeah. Like it feels More of a marketplace, though. yeah, and it's got a lot of like a lot of made to order foods and a really good meat department, and not so much stuff that you get off the shelf, but yeah. you're getting more fresh things there. Okay. Plus, they have a really good wine and beer and and liquor selection. So, I've yeah. said it once, I've said a hundred times, we need to have charcuterie on this show. Mm-hmm. Just like good? on the table, I, I need to do that every week for you guys. Not every week, but just when we're just all on. <laughs> yeah, just All a little right. meat. Well, you can bring it, yeah, then it'll be on the table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of my one of my clients actually sells charcuterie boards on Amazon. I'll have my wife make them. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. We got all the hookups yeah. right now. Yeah. That's great, but yet not tonight. Sorry, guys. It's okay. Is it? Yeah. Um. Do you know anything else about this particular pick, Wilk? It yeah. Says. Yeah. So it's barrel two twenty six. Barrel two twenty six. Yeah. They're all from the same barrel. Um. What I know is the the owners. It's like a twelve store chain in my area of Michigan. Um. And the owners and I think one of their sons went down to the distillery and and tasted and and tested and they brought back one that they felt like was a flavor profile the thing that i learned from the the wine and beer and liquor consigliere at the store that i shop at yeah um what, was, a, what a word cons- you're welcome for that yeah. too yeah yeah i'll have plenty of 12 dollar words tonight don't you worry about that um but yeah the the guy who is the like purveyor of the goods at the store basically said they wanted to buy something that they thought people would would like and drink and wasn't too different than what they would expect from Buffalo Trace, but maybe could pick up some some different notes. So I've read different reviews that are out there for this year of barrel select picks for Buffalo Trace, and they all say some similar things, but um, I don't know how this compares to... He's at attention. I love it. Um, I don't know how this compares. What I'd love to learn from you guys is how this compares to if you were drinking Buffalo Trace on the regular. I, I wish I did have a, a regular bottle here, but... Yeah. Yeah, I, okay. I almost think it's. I mean, do you want to talk about it a little bit soon? Mm-hmm. I almost say it's a, it's a little sweeter. I mean, you you called it earlier. It's. I agree with that. It's chuggable. Yeah. Which is not typically what. You know, we've all become kind of snobs over the past few years with, with our bourbon and kind of, and it's all everyone's kind of chasing more of the cast strength. I've never had. Do they make cast strength or barrel strength Buffalo Trace? Is that a thing? Not to my knowledge, no. No, there's no. Blands. Right. Okay, so right. yeah, so right. we we had the blands. I was cast strength earlier tonight. You did. I did, and it tasted. Uh, it, it was just so different tasting yeah, than this. Thirty proof more too. Yeah. yeah th- <laughs> this almost tastes like what you would if you added water or if you added ice to something that's higher proof. I mean, this this doesn't need anything added no. to it. There's no heat. I like no I, heat. I don't there's know. none. Yeah. At the very very end, there's a little bit of spice. Yeah. For me, 
And that's that's what I had my little bit of research said. There's a little finish that people were picking up on related to some kind of cinnamon esque yeah. finish at the very it's end. very faint. And it's very it's yeah, it's, yeah yeah it's a long time you know until you get that. But pretty sweet throughout. Like you 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 yeah you, yeah yeah. Right it's off. good. It's good for a day like this. It's hot muggy. It's, it's really good for a day like this. It is. Um, compared to normal Buffalo Trace, besides being sweeter, I mean, it's just a smooth. I, I think it's kind of normal Buffalo Trace might be a little harsher, maybe a little harsher. I think this is a little smoother. I think yeah, there's more heat on a, a normal Buffalo Trace bottle. And, a little more bite. But if you if your guy at the store was going for the masses, yeah, there's not anyone that's going to turn this away. And well, and that, that and that was what um that was what I was learning with the little bit of research that I did in the conversation that I had. Mind you, mildly faded because it was over a year ago. Mm -hmm. um but at the same time when i bought it he told me who went and did the pick and i don't see i don't see these guys as bourbon hunters right like these are guys probably in their 60s or 70s they're not that, looking for something unique they exactly just want something right. that, yeah. they want something that's going to appeal to a crowd again i don't find myself in a market i'm sure there are niche segments of the area around me that are really big into chasing bourbon um but i I don't feel the heat as much as like I remember being here in Columbus where there's lines out the store of a giant eagle or a Kroger or oh, something yeah. like that when something that's every truck released. day. That's exactly. not even a barrel pick. That's ex just every ex truck day. Exactly nowadays. right. And and that demand, I don't witness that. Like I don't see that type of it's like anyone scarcity. who made a little bit of money in the past year and a half has decided to get into bourbon. It's right. basically what's happened. And well, they're well, just the year too. There's a lot we've talked about it before, <laughs> you know, over the, the months of, of twenty twenty is there were a lot more people at home. A lot more people drinking, a lot more people smoking right. cigars, all that stuff. So anyone that was actually flirting with the the hobby of collecting bourbon, then right. to your point, maybe they they had uh, been laid off or or right. if they just were working from home and they had a little more uh, Time. flexible schedule. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, could, they could go do that. Now yeah. that people are coming back out, it might change a little bit. I don't know. But um, well, and, uh, and the note, the note that I, I'm thinking, like the person I'm envisioning uh picking this out are probably guys that we're going to see at the golf courses that will be at tomorrow during you know a work day uh when we're fortunate enough to play some golf at the end of this week hopefully if the rain holds off but there are these guys probably in their 60s uh probably not drinking a lot of unique or rare bourbons but they're the guys that are probably just looking for something comfortable to, to sip on and i think that's probably the, the palette that picked this barrel pick out that would be my guess i want to say this actually it has enough sweetness in it now it doesn't have like a little bit of Maybe the bitters as much, but it actually kind of reminds me a little bit of a cocktail made with normal Buffalo Trace. Mm. It has a lot of that sweetness to it. Not quite an old fashioned, but something right. in that that realm where it's kind of a stronger poured old fashioned. Yeah, you wouldn't need to sweeten this up at all. No, absolutely not. Oh, thanks for picking it out, man. Appreciate you holding on to this for a couple of years. Yeah, I think we're going to go through all, all three tonight, but thank you. Yeah, but that's okay. No, I mean, it was, I know you guys have been looking for um things that you can't always get your hands on i didn't know that the scarcity of buffalo trace was being experienced here in ohio when i picked these out over a year ago but um i saw something unique that hit my email and i happened to notice in store and uh, you know i wanted to save it for an opportunity to come down and spend some quality time with you guys and tony between your legs there yeah, he's, he's fine. In there? He's fine. <laughs> he peanut butter in there? I mean, does it, does it like chunky or smooth? Because yes. I don't know. Yeah, I'm allergic the, to peanuts. The so. answer is yes. No, I don't know. Over here. I yeah, don't exactly. Know. Exactly. <laughs> the show has a new dynamic since uh, he's been out in the garage. And then uh, I think we're going to have the other one a little later on. But you also brought uh, Ezra books as well. Yeah, this was something I picked up over the winter. Um, I stopped buying all my my bourbon at, at grocery stores, but there is a pretty solid. Um, liquor store it only is one one location it's only about five minutes from my home um, but i was really impressed with the depth of their selection and they had everything that you would want under the sun and, and i got to know the owner a little bit and i said the same kind of thing i was like you know i'm looking for something that i'm not going to just find everywhere um something a bit more unique and um, he pointed me right to this he had about eight or so bottles left of this when i bought it i don't know how long he'd been sitting on it um but it's same thing but it was him and his son that went down to pick this barrel at Ezra Brooks or from Ezra Brooks. And um, this one I'm excited to, to share with you guys because it, it, it has a bit more of a complex palette and finish and it's got a decent amount of heat on it. It's 107 um, and I've enjoyed it and I've shared it with some friends that have come over randomly or in my garage over the past year as, as COVID has evolved. And I've had a lot of really kind of high praise. So it was hard to hold on to as much as I did, but I'm excited to share that. You know, as you this guys. thing opens up a little bit in the glass, the Buffalo Trace, I do get a little bit more of that cinnamon kind yeah. of, yeah, it, it really does start to open up a little bit. I Nate, think you might get a little bit from the spice of the cigar too. 
You think that's what it is? I, I definitely think it is. And I think the cigar goes well with it. Surprisingly, I was unsure about it, but I hadn't had this pick yet. So, Nate, what do you got? I was sipping on it uh, right before uh, we went live, and uh, I had actually written down that it, it definitely is smoother. It doesn't have as much heat on it, but it also makes it uh, taste, I think, just a, a tad younger. Um, but if you actually hold... Wait, explain that. Why do you think it tastes younger? It almost has like a little bit more of a tannin taste to it. Hmm. Just that younger whiskey taste sometimes. Um, but then uh, if you hold it in your palate or in your mouth for a little while and then down the hatch, I got more vanilla and brown sugar out of it. Yeah. So if, it's, so if I just, you know, take a sip down the hatch, smooth, definitely less of that spice than regular Buffalo Trace, but holding it brings out more of those uh, kind of that what you'd expect to get from a toasted barrel as opposed to a charred barrel. You get more of that vanilla brown sugar. Nate, you've become a little a bit of an aficionado over over the years, over the past couple of years. Um, and, you know, you guys did, you posted basically five or six episodes here over the past weekend yeah. um, from the past month. So I was able to catch up on the podcast and things like that and, and kind of listen. Are there, how are you tasting your bourbon these days? Are you, what are, technique? Yeah, what technique? Because, I mean, you're what, what episode is this? There's 172. So that's a lot of bottles of bourbon. So are you, are you, you're not taking notes or anything. You're not going through the, you know, Jake had a notebook where he was going through that and stuff like that. Are, are you swishing it around? Are you doing each nostril? How are you actually tasting it? I, well, I mean, when I start out, I'm doing, you know, just take a sip, maybe hold it for a second or two and then swallow and see what I get out of that. Uh, but then I'll actually, I'll swish uh, one sip, see if that changes anything. And then I'll do ones where I actually hold it uh, in my mouth for a while, you know, like 20, 30 seconds before I swallow. That's how I used to throw up when I did tequila, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> that, that exact, I was like, that, I just physically can't but do I that with alcohol anymore. I don't. I don't have uh, like the, the flavor wheel chart with me. I just, you know, it, it'll pop in my head and I'll just write it down. It is significantly different if you switch it around. I'll give you that. So the one thing I'm getting, and I'm, maybe this is maybe delayed reaction or me being a noob, um, cause I don't drink bourbon as often as I do. Some people become parents and drink more. The I claws a law, bro. It's all I, good. I, 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 I drink less somehow, but, um, I get more of the spice, the longer I kind of sit with it. And then like almost the aftertaste, like if you just take a sip, maybe a puff or two, but then take another sip and sit with it for a second and then let it go. I find that that's delayed. It's not heat. It's just like a, a, a delayed spice that happens probably. 15 to 30 seconds after a couple of... I think it's amped up since we talked about it when we first took a couple sips of it. Think so? I, I think it's the cigar. I, I, think, I think what you're saying yeah. right there, you take a puff of it. Want to talk a little bit about the cigar? Yeah, we can. I was just going to say that with the cigar going back and forth, and we talked about it before on here, is that there's a different experience if you kind of let both sit and then you take a, a puff of the cigar and then yeah. take a drink versus the opposite where you've kind of taken a break and you take a sip and then you take a, a puff of the cigar. It almost guises as heat. Like the spice, it's not because I've, I've had plenty of warmer bourbons, but it, it, the spice almost pre, like makes your brain pretend like it's going to be yeah. hotter than it is, but it, yeah. it's definitely spice in the back of your throat. I, I think they both stand up separately too, which is nice. The cigar can definitely goes well with the bourbon. They do. This cigar, um, the Herrera Esteli Brazil. This was a, a add on to the line, the Herrera Esteli. Uh, Willie Herrera is the master blender for Drew Estate. And before that, he was actually the, um, he was part of El Tite in the Bronze, which is a factory in Miami. And so the Herrera Esteli Miami was an ode to that, his time with them. Uh, he was the master blender, and, and I forget all his titles there, but I think that factory started in like 95 or something like that. It was mid 90s, uh, El Tite in the Bronze. And they're known for doing a lot of, not necessarily just small batch, but they, they're kind of a high end, more of a boutique factory in in Miami. So they is, eat is this cigars. Brand the, is this an actual brand? The Herrera Esteli is actually named after Willie Herrera, but it's a Drew Estate product. Okay, so is this just, does he have multiple? Yes, there's a Herrera Esteli. Uh, the first one I think was actually the Norteño, which you may have heard of that one, but that's a, a Mexican wrapper. What color is that one? It's got a green band. Okay um got a bird on it like a white bird uh, that was one and now that's kind of been re repackaged along with the Herrera, Herrera Esteli Miami Herrera Esteli Brazil 
And, uh, and then also now it's called the Herrera Esteli Norteño is what the box, it looks very similar, which I don't have a box with us, but this cigar is made in Nicaragua. It's made at the, one of the Drew estate factories. And, uh, this is going to be a, a Brazilian stock cut Maduro wrapper leaf over, I believe, Connecticut broadleaf. That's what I like in it. I, I don't know broadleaf. how much taste you get from the actual broadleaf, but there's something in there the that smell. I like. Is that what it is? I get more of the smell. Yeah. And then it's Nicaraguan filler. So, um, Kind of a unique, a unique blend on this one, but uh, you guys lit it up, and I think everyone in the garage that's smoking it actually kind of had a kind of you know Shannon Chapman who's been on the podcast, he's in the garage and he lit it up, and you know Spencer, you lit it up I think before we went on on air here, and you guys both had a, a similar reaction. I was surprised. I mean, the way that it looks, you're just going to think it's a typical medium body, maybe full. I mean, it's a Maduro wrapper, right? Yeah, it's a Brazilian Matafina, which that's the... Yeah, but yeah. I don't want to say... There, there's not funk to it, but there, there's a unique flavor to this that I cannot pinpoint, but I've not tasted it in another cigar that I can, off the top of my head, think about. Hey. Shannon says the Retro Hail is pretty good. What are it's these? funny. Willie Herrera, when he was interviewed, I was looking at one of the articles, you know, when this was first released, he had a quote where it said, when you blend Matafina, which is the, the Brazilian uh, wrapper leaf, with broadleaf, it offers a gritty floral sweetness. Would you agree with that? I do not, but that's okay. Okay. I don't get any floral or anything like that, but I, I don't know if I've had a cigar that has floral sweetness in yeah. it, to be fair. So I've had cocktails that have like floral notes and mm -hmm. things that I, you know, I, I, I don't want to say pepper, but there's, there's definitely a spice in here that I can't put my finger on right now. What do you think, Nate? He's not used to being in that, that. When you say there. spice, you're talking about just the palate or retrohale? Uh, I'm not retrohaling, so I, I can't speak to that. I would say just up front, just on the first couple of puffs, there's just like there's it's, just something unique to it that I it's just for it, it's, a cigar that looks like this, it's just unique to me. It it reminds me a little bit of a few weeks ago when we had the diesel cigar on in that the like, whiskey row sherry cask. Yes. Yeah. That initial light up, like you get a lot of spice. And just really bold flavor. Yeah, it's definitely but, calmed down a little bit. But then it's a complex smoke. Like after that, it, it actually backs off a little bit and becomes a little bit more of a complex, delicate type of flavor. But there is there is a spice, but it's not a pepper. I don't think. I, I agree uh, with you. I think the cigar would be fine. As in it's, like it's a, a soft, a, it's a softer type of spice than say a black pepper uh, or. I have no idea what white pepper tastes like. I know you guys have used that term. I have no idea white pepper. I've never used that on any food that i'm aware of <laughs> do you know what white pepper tastes like no i know i kind of know what they talk about when and i've said that before some of the flavors and stuff on that flavor wheel i think are agreed upon terms mm -hmm. i don't think that it's a a blatant thing that's just my personal opinion i think some people that write these reviews will, will disagree but i think that it's it's the 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 barnyard the leather some of those things i think are just agreed upon types of terms that that are reminiscent of of something that People are like, oh, I get it, and then it's kind of became that's the that's what the flavor is. Jake, you're you're not really a cigar guy, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. So I, uh, how how is the cigar treating you? I mean, the times that I've been in the tinderbox with Stevie, and and I do have a cigar, or I have one of my friends who are cigar guys pick me out something. I usually stray towards something that's a little bit, I don't know, lighter to medium body, just because fuller. Yeah, and this is definitely fuller. I'm yeah. I'm definitely getting more of a. I don't know. I don't know what the the gritty flavor that that you guys were speaking of that that it would be, but I'm definitely getting more of a full, say, fuller bodied medium strength. No, I, I, I'd, I was gonna say medium full. I think that it's. Um, I don't. There's something that I, I think that it's, and this is gonna sound. I always say it because I feel like any time that I pull a note out of it that I think is gonna not sell the cigar. It's almost like a. Um, a little bit dry, musty, kind of a, of a flavor. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense to anyone out there, but it's kind of like this. Um, I don't get the sweetness that Willie Herrera was talking about. I don't get as much of that, and that could be also the fact that I haven't smoked this cigar in a while, and I'm, I'm never had this pick of the Buffalo Trace that I yeah. think we all agree that there is a lot of sweetness in sweet. the drink. Um, there's a lot of like that spice that's lingering. Yeah, and and we'll get to the the part here, Wilk, that you know we we rate the cigar the whiskey and the pairing but kind of before we get to that i would say that i agree with you spencer this is a, an enjoyable combo 
but I think that it's it's definitely altering both. Yeah, do you think the sweetness? Because I was smoking more. Yeah. This whiskey is getting lost. N- not lost. It's getting like that that lingering spice that yeah. I had when I first took sips. It's just fucking sitting on my my exactly. tongue, and I don't know if that's coming from the cigar. But when I smoke the cigar, I don't taste that as much. But then after I set them both down, now I still just have this kind of this lingering. Right. Uh, this is getting uh, hotter. Heat. The bourbon's getting a little hotter, which is the goes. exact opposite of what you expect typically when you're drinking the same whiskey in 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 multiple glasses of it. Right. I think because normally same. I think it mutes it a little bit. Your palate gets a little bit more used to it, huh. and yeah, that, that right. first initial heat, that spice, or that, the, whatever kicks you the first time. It's it's normally it will get a little bit more tolerable. It'll get more, uh, maybe not sweet, but it, it'll be a little bit more muted or subdued. Some of those 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 heat or spice characteristics in a whiskey typically, but I think this cigar is actually bringing it back out. So I, I don't know. Maybe you, my palate might be a little bit confused right. between these two. Do you think that the the sweetness, like you almost described the bourbon as like, uh, not as like almost like a hotter old fashioned, right? Because it had that heavy sweetness on the front. You can get that yeah. almost caramely and deeper fruit flavors on the front of the the whiskey do you feel like that sweetness is over maybe dominating any natural sweetness that you would expect from the cigar because the bourbon is so much sweeter to the palate you know what i'm saying it might be i mean this is something that you know i had an old-fashioned it was one of the smoked Mm old-fashioned yep um and i had it at uh, high bank distillery which yep. um i posted on the bourbon and bs stuff so if you guys are in the club a little area, tasting over there we did tasting um side note yeah we had adam and um rudy on the podcast uh about a year ago and adam is the owner and he was actually there it's really nice of him i was there with uh, elena from bourbon and blondes who's nice. been on the podcast before and actually nate uh, Elaine and I are going to be down in Louisville at the end of the month. We're going to be posting some stuff from some of the distilleries down there. But she had come into the town, and, and we wanted to check out at least one of the distilleries. So we went there, and we were sitting at the bar. And while we were waiting on our food, Adam walked by working or whatever. He came back from the back or came up from the back and walked back by, saw me, and he kind of took a double take. And he was like, dude, I haven't seen you in a while. You look great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like, I haven't seen you in a while. And so I introduced him to Elena, said she does a, a bourbon podcast as well. We went in the back because uh, he's like, hey, you want to come back and check it out? So we had like an informal tour. And then when we came back out, Elena hadn't had any. So he had the bartender fix us up with the Whiskey War, with the uh, the Barrel Proof, which just won a big award in San Francisco. I saw that. Do yeah. they have any of that for sale or is that? Yeah, it's for sale. Okay. And, I thought uh, they sold out of also, that, that batch or something. Uh, they may have. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's they're they're churning through it, but it's definitely upped in in um, price demand. No, just demand right okay. now. And then also the the midnight cask, which is one that they mix with uh, port. So that's like a cocktail like and glass. Angel or it's kind of like that. And that's talking to him, and we're getting off track a little bit. But talking to him, it was he was explaining to Elena since she was brand new to the whole brand, since it's an Ohio brand, and she's from St. Louis. That uh, that was exactly what he kind of modeled it after. Is that that uh, Basil Hayden's. Um, what was it? The crit, not the crit, the dark rum. Yeah, Anyone? I know what you're talking about. Kind of the newer bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, yeah, it was one of those that he wanted something that was more of like a like he just wanted to pour it over an ice cube and have a cocktail. A little bit more approachable. He literally said he's like, I'm lazy when I I, I drink yeah. most of my stuff neat. I don't make yeah. cocktails at home. So, yeah, exactly. Dark yeah, dark rye. There you go. But uh, yeah, we did. So that what I was saying, and there's Elena right there. She's a midnight cask was delicious. She said on the, the comments. This one kind of reminds me of that. I had that smoked old fashioned, mm-hmm. but they, they use that butane torch. Yep, and then, yep. you know, you can smell on the corner of the bar where they're doing this when they're, they're burning and you yeah. smell that, that burning wood. Yeah. And then they, they bring it over to you and then take the top off of it. it Phenomenal. It's Phenomenal delicious. presentation too. Very good pre- presentation. And that's what this kind of reminds me of. Honestly, it's <laughs> sweet, but, it, and, and again, with this cigar, now I'm getting a little bit of that, that kind of, Maybe that's what I'm getting yeah. is that that smoke. Right. So the which, smoke. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I feel that, and mind you, palates are always going to be different, but mm-hmm. I feel that same effect after letting it sit for a bit and taking another sip. It's all just saying right here, but it's not It's not heat. It's not no. hot. It's just that smoke or spice or that combination yeah. of the two that's happening. Yeah. I'll be interested to see what the cigar does to the Ezra as well. I'd like to try that a little bit just see for that next see year. Uh, see how they handle each other but i would like to have the cigar on its own because i feel like it can stand up on its own it and does can almost be like i think it's spicier its on its own i believe it i, I think it's got more it. spice on its own when i when mm-hmm. i recall smoking it before adrian who's going to be on the podcast he, he has donated some 
very nice whiskeys. Uh, I'm not going to give it away. We kind of alluded to that, but he should we crack those tonight? Is what? <laughs> no. Thank no. you, Adrian, for your <laughs> patronage. He actually he he donated them to the the podcast, and then I said, you know, do you want to be on it? He said, yeah, yeah, I'd love to be on it. So. <laughs> We're make that happen. very, very bribable. It took, me, it, it, took me, like. it took me three bottles, but I, I had to bribe myself on to call you my to bribe shot. Yourself. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Whatever but it he takes. Just said he's going to bring his drink smoker, and we're going to make some smoke old fashioned. That's so awesome. That'll be interesting. Nice. How far away is he? He lives in <laughs> um, Marysville, I think. Okay, half hour. See you half in a bit. Hour. Yeah, see you, Adrian. <laughs> I was going to say Spencer's talking about tonight. Yeah, hour yeah, two. Yeah, maybe. No, he was talking about. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, yeah. But with that being said, does anyone have any other questions? I mean, Drew Estate, we kind of went over this in previous podcasts that, you know, with Swisher International taking over, read the side of the label, Nate says. So Swisher, like Swisher Sweets took over? Yes. So, all right. So walk me through this. So we got three different. So Swisher Sweets owns Drew Estate and Drew Estate is branding this cigar. Is that fair to say? Drew Estate is the manufacturer. Swisher is the, if you will, the parent company that that bought or acquired Drew Estate. But other than that, um, at that time, you had people in the industry. You had um, Nicholas Malilo, and then you also had Steve Saka. They were kind of the the, the big guys with Jonathan Drew, okay. which is was the the founder of Drew Estate, right? Uh, goes by JD a lot of times on a lot of stuff, and so Steve Saka and and Malilo, Nicholas Malilo. They were in the operations and the blending process, all that stuff. But right as this stuff was happening, they both stepped away from the company, Drew Estate, and then they went off and, and did their own projects. So you have Foundation Cigar Company uh, for Foundation Cigars. That's going to be Malilo. And then you have Saka doing Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. So why, why is this one called Brazil? Okay, so and when they stepped away... Willie Herrera was was brought in to be the master blender and kind of the, the head guy in all of this. And this is called the Brazil because of, like I said, the Brazilian Matafina wrapper. So I'm, I'm more used to, I guess, the CAO Brazil. But, but you had mentioned that yeah. Brazil is becoming more more popular, more prevalent. Maybe it's just not as well marketed. The, the is there Maduro certain stuff you, that you look for in Brazil, the flavors in Brazil versus kind of Nicaragua? It depends. It depends. And a lot of times they're naming cigars in this industry after the wrapper leaf. So that that's where you're. That would take the precedent. A lot of the times. Yeah. It's, it's an easy way to market it. Um, again, having the Connecticut broadleaf, you know, when you hear Connecticut, a lot of times that's actually marketed as a Connecticut shade. Right. So they don't normally if they have a Connecticut broadleaf, which is a hardier leaf. It's usually a darker leaf when they're, they're utilizing that as a wrapper or even in the, the blend that that brings, I think, some depth to a cigar and when they're not going to name it the Connecticut just because I think Connecticut has been overused as a Connecticut shade. And not everyone's into lighter. Connecticut too, right? Well, again, that's not your tip. A lot of times you, you equate a Connecticut shade or Connecticut blend when it says it on the, the van um, as a milder cigar. Yep. Yeah. So Drew Estate, they're, they're really well known for, for many cigars. One would be the Liga Privada. And the league of never heard of that. Do you have one of those we can I don't try? Have one. Hmm. Interesting. I don't have one of those. So, okay. silly little simple thing I just did. I decided to take a sip of water just to kind of cleanse my palate a little mm -hmm. bit. Took a couple of puffs of this, and then I took another sip of the Buffalo Trace. And all of that spice and kind of that delayed spice reaction that we had been talking about almost vanished. It's gone. It like went so away. It, it yeah. Just washed out your. Yeah, yeah. So I just took a little sip of water, and then I the re retasted the re retasted the cigar, and then I retasted the bourbon with it, and. That that lingering spice we've been talking about is non-existent. So it's it's then the cigar, crazy. then the whiskey. I did the cigar, then the whiskey. I don't know if you know. Jake, know. Jake, I know you're not a uh, a heavy drinker. I would say is yeah, probably yeah. the best one. That's fair. If you're at home or if you're at a bar and stuff like that, what what type of bourbons uh, profiles? I guess do you like or is there stuff that you, is your go-to? And would you order this just neat at a bar? Or would you order something <laughs> different? Bless you. Yeah, I would probably order something different but if i saw it at a bar or if i knew that it was what it was i would have no issue having it need i could see this being like a decent i don't know second third fourth drink of the evening do it stevie go Co for it Co let it go i did the retro i haven't taken a drink uh, yet oh, okay. COVID? oh okay yeah the vid. too yeah. soon i already had it but i mean we're similar in a lot of ways in our bourbon preferences at least our go-to's like i beat it i, I think <laughs> <laughs> you don't look like you beat it. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> looks like looks like round two is coming for you. Allergies? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember my first COVID. Jesus. <laughs> can we joke? Is it? You can. Oh. I, I uh, yeah. Anyhow, 
Yeah. Um, and so everything's just down. like all, all these forks are just sticking to my face right now. It's crazy. I don't know what's going on. But you and I, I think, are both Woodford Reserve guys, right? Like yeah. that is our staple, standard, like go-to sipping on, sitting at home, right? So that's you that's, know what it's going to taste like, right? That's my default. You know what you're going to get. Um, and then yeah, as far as you know, other things that I've I've dabbled into, I I, I honestly don't stray too far. Usually, I get gifts. Um, I have a bottle of like jefferson's at sea that i'm supposed to open up that i haven't tried yet but i'm excited to see that you know and taste the intricacies of that um but yeah. it's more about you know sticking to what i know and then if i find myself like pre-covid i'd find myself at a bar texting one of these two guys asking some questions of like hey what do you think about this or i'll ask a random opinion every so often um and i'm always excited to, to try something unique and different but i think this buffalo trace i would probably be comfortable ordering neat but maybe the third or fourth pour of the night. This is now. one for four dollars at Novax, and it's two for eight if you get it right now too. Is, is that it? Just a regular Buffalo Trace. Yeah, this yeah. and Jameson. Yeah, those are some good times. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we got a good Jameson special at Novax right here. We used to, for those that you know, we'll get into like how we've known each other for a long time, and um, those those days down watching NFL Sundays yeah. were long days. We'd usually get together for the one o'clocks. Because uh, that's normally when our, our teams yeah. would play, because we got basically a Bears fan, Browns fan, and a Lions fan. Correct. And uh, the four o'clock games would would be at another bar right across the street. Yes. That also had what were the deals at the time? Uh, they had a great six. yeah one for four, two for eight. I mean, what it a was, deal. I think doubles <laughs> were six bucks. Were they really? Yeah, the Jamesons. So we were all gentlemen and we were all uh, drinking a lot. Yeah. So then at that point, it was like, here, I'll get this round, and then. Twenty dollars, you could run a bar back then. I don't know if you still can anymore. <laughs> Actually, be a hero. Yeah. Also, well. that area of downtown Columbus, I feel like on Sundays was pretty light. Like it was a yeah. lot of like you get a good swell of people right around the, the, the high point of the one o'clock games. But then once the team started losing or the games were pretty much over, I mean, you you pretty much had your run of the place. It was know, post three yeah. thirty until whenever. Not yeah. a place that I'd want to be on like a Friday or Saturday night just because not because right. it was a bad area. It was just like it was a shit show. Right. And then Sundays, yeah. it was kind of like yeah. everyone down that area were, were hung over from two days of drinking and right. then we would show up and yeah. Yeah. And we had some quieter individuals in our crew and, and some louder individuals that um, would make the experience. At, yeah. He's in Columbus right now. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, we, we would have some, some very fun, days uh all pre-kids it's hard to remember but uh it I'm was still there man yeah i remember yeah, yeah, you remember those days, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. how things have changed <laughs> since then i got a kid out there somewhere oh god I'm sure you do yeah. so any 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 notes related to like post palate cleanse dv did you did you taste anything different or well i will say as you saw i actually the pepper <laughs> of the cigar actually in the retro hail came got you in, in in a lot of force there and that's why i was sneezing it, it definitely had more yeah. pepper in the, the retro hail um, by the time I got to the whiskey, yeah, I mean, it was it kind of was like the initial s sips for sure. I yeah. agree. I think the sweetness has come back after a little bit of water. Yep. Which you know, I don't mind. You know, not everyone likes a little sweetness, but it's uh, it's not right. bad. Not yeah. bad at all. And I've actually some. My wife is not a whiskey guy, um, or a guy for that matter. Um, but I've gotten her into yeah, <laughs> proof. It's good seeing. You're welcome. Good, yeah. Good seeing her tonight. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely um hope she's listening yeah she's not but that's okay um <laughs> but i've actually mildly gotten her into whiskey because she sees me drinking it straight i'm like oh well let me try it and then we'll she's gotten really good at making complex flavored like simple syrups homemade Ooh, fancy yeah nice. so different little intricate you know and she likes to drink an old-fashioned so like it's an easy drink like we've gotten really good at that's at, a keeper yeah absolutely um so we have right now <laughs> yeah you're welcome um in our in our pantry and in the fridge right now some of them need to be refrigerated others are still like jarred and room temperature um we've got like three different flavored simple syrups and um that's been a fun like exploration of of bourbon for her to like see her eyes open up to saying oh like this isn't as unapproachable as like, i think she might have been intimidated by um and and so it's been cool to like experience that with her through her eyes where i might be drinking it neat um you know she's entering into it via you know I think mix. bourbon too and whiskey and all that stuff. It, it, if you haven't had much experience with a certain spirit, yeah, I, I don't like. It's kind of like with cigars too. You know, it's like they don't like a certain brand or with whiskey, like or with with spirits. It's oh, I don't like tequila, and it's like, yeah. well, what tequilas have you had? Um, well, I have you ever sipped on a sipping tequila like right. an añejo or something like right. that? They're like, well, I took shots at a bar. Like that, that's not this. No. It's not yeah. always the same thing. Same thing Quero. with whiskeys. Yeah. 
same thing with whiskeys. You know, if you, you yeah. think about the fact that like, why well, I, I had, I think it was bourbon. I don't know. I was like, yeah, I had Jack or Jim Beam or like a, a basic, like every day at the bar, people are taking shots. Not the same thing as not only getting into different bourbons, like from Buffalo Trace, let alone doing the experience like you are allowing us to have, which is a barrel pick, right. which doesn't even taste like what the label would right. would assume it's going to uh, yeah. taste like. I'm, I'm proud that I've graduated her up to not blending these lower proofed ones um, where like if she'll take a sip or a nip off of the Ezra, she it can't. It, it's too it's too fierce. Right. right? Okay. Yeah. But that most of that is gone because like I let her make it into old fashions because she appreciated the flavor yeah, of the whiskey absolutely. more with a more fuller and hotter whiskey to balance out the sweet from the old fashioned that was mixed in. So um, now if we make old fashions, I make sure it's something warmer um, because I think she's grown, grown and I obviously will grow to, go well with the, the exactly right. the sweetness. Yeah, yeah exactly. Word like this, you wouldn't cut that with anything really, you know, and I wouldn't, I would, she would probably be fine with either this yeah, neat or you throw a little like one ice cube yeah. and mm-hmm. say, try this. Yes. And you could even say to someone that's inexperienced, whether, you know, something like your wife or, or yeah. anyone, say, I, I made you a cocktail. What do you think of it? And you pour this over an ice cube and see what, well, it's not so bad. It's pretty sweet and yeah. all that stuff. And it's like, that's actually just straight bourbon. Yeah. And so. that, and that, that happened at Christmas time. My, my sister's uh, boyfriend um, brought over um, a bottle of Basil Hayden and right. Like most of the people hadn't, had it before I, I remember having it um but even my dad who doesn't drink bourbon was really impressed with how easy drinking it was neat. exactly and it could be dangerous yeah exactly yeah. right but yeah. no i mean everybody's you know you know it's celebratory christmas holiday time but uh yeah i think it's interesting to see people's opinions change almost live as they're experiencing things maybe that they had a precognition yeah, about yeah exactly it's right. absolutely yeah. fun absolutely um, with that, I do want to get into uh, the rating time. So, Wilk, I don't know if you've listened to some of the more recent podcasts, but at some point we did add a uh, rating for the end of part one, which is going to be out of 10. Yep. It's three different uh, ratings. So one is for the, the whiskey, which is the Buffalo Trace, uh, Bush's, yep. Bush's barrel sele- or single barrel select, and then uh, the cigar, which is the uh, the Herrera Esteli Brazil, and then uh, a, a out of 10 rating for the pairing together. Okay. And since this is your first time here, go ahead. Ripping off the bandaid. I That's like it, it man. Get in um, there. yeah, I think out of ten, I'd probably. I'm trying to think about them independently, like you, like you instructed me to. Yeah. Um, compared to other things that I've tried and had, I think the description that Spencer reiterated, um, related to the to the Buffalo Trace is very drinkable, bordering on chuggable or, or guzzleable, right? Um, I don't know if that's a word. Um, it is now, and because of that, I think I think that that's where it lands, kind of in the middle for me, probably like between a five and a six on the on the bourbon, probably closer to a six out of ten. Yeah, Nate's got some competition here. Woo! <laughs> Second Russian ju- Ukrainian judge. Ten yeah, is the yeah, best. yeah. I think yeah, yeah. I'm okay. aware. Yeah, okay. I think six. I'm aware. Yeah, I think six. Um, go, go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. Um, Buffalo say, Trace will figure things say, out. Say hi to your mother for me. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then separately, the the cigar not being a cigar guy, um, I think about it from the perspective of if I would go back and choose to smoke it again, uh, being yeah. that I smoke a couple of cigars a year, probably. Sure. Um, uh, it's a good year. Um, I'd, I'd probably say similar, probably right, right around that five, six range, because I don't know that I would go choose to go back to it. If I was sitting at the tinderbox with you, I would probably want something different than than what I'm experiencing yeah. here. I don't yeah. know if it's something sweeter or something maybe a little more mild. Um, but it's just not my preference, not being so deep into it. And then the pairing together, I actually like the spice that yeah. we were talking about and yeah. experiencing. And 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 I know that I'm not as sophisticated from the pairing standpoint, but I think the two together and the the heat that I'm maybe getting off the cigar that I don't like as much independently, I think is complemented really well with the sweetness of the the trace. And so it makes it probably closer to like a seven combined for okay. me because I, I do appreciate that little lingering kick that I I retain. So it's better together. I think so. Okay. Because I think there's a there's a there's a yin and yang happening between. Do you have two. one that's going to be more in that eight to to nine range whiskey for people's frame of reference, <sighs> since Goodness. they don't know you? Yeah, that's a good question. Like you said Woodford is kind of your your everyday. Yeah, that's like my go to solid yeah. seven and a half seven. You know, so yeah. I think I think a notch above that. Oh gosh, um, put me on the spot. I did. I really like I really like that Ezra. That's why I brought it. Okay. So I'd probably throw that Ezra as an eight, just because we have a recency bias here that we All can right. example. There you go. Um, and then as far as a go to, yeah, I don't know that I have a a good fresh memory of one that I would also remember. I'm also I, I'm a big fan of um, Angel's Envy as well. Neat. 
Um, I, I enjoy that as a treat, I guess, because I'm not always paying for it, you know, from the from the, the sticker price. Um, but I enjoy that just from a kind of a comparable to a maybe if I want to elevate myself a little bit above a Woodford, I'll, I'll pick up an Angel's Envy and that'll okay. be a notch above for me, I guess. All right. But that's my personal preference. Spencer, how about you? Uh, so I'm, I'm not as hard. Well, I shouldn't say not as harsh, but I guess my, you know, when you see something in cigar aficionados, if you see something at, at a six or seven, you're almost like, don't even try it, get away right, from it, yeah. stuff like that. <clears throat> right. Um, so I think for what it is for the Buffalo trace, for what it is, which is a $30 bottle. That's a barrel pick. That's 80 ish proof 90. 90 90 excuse me 90 proof you're right spence that i was being a little unfair for what it yeah, is yeah, and for yeah, the yeah. price point you're right you're yeah. right you're right <laughs> you you had your moment I know. <laughs> <laughs> no but i i'm i'm swayed you're right for yeah. the for for the price point and the flavor and you're, the, yeah, yeah you're, you're right you're not going to find a better you're bottle right. of bourbon for 30 dollars. you're just if you're right. you are you're very fortunate um, Nate, I'm sure has some stuff that's seven dollars that he loves, <laughs> but <laughs> Buys it uh, pharmacy. for for what it is, and there is nothing wrong with it. You're right. there, there's everything right with it. Um, it does taste, you know, regular Buffalo Trace. I would have as a, a seven and a half, okay. just because it's a fantastic bottle of bourbon for thirty bucks. It's five six bucks at a bar or something like that. This, right. I would say, it's. 8.25 okay. where it's delicious. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, there's just, in, in my opinion, there's, there's nothing crazy unique about it. Not that there's anything mm -hmm. not special. It is special because it's, you know, it's, you're never going to taste another barrel that's like this, yep. but for what it is, it's a fantastic 8.5 bourbon. It's sweet. It's chuggable. We would get in trouble because we could go through a bottle or very three, quickly, and three. we could go through a bottle on very quickly on that. On the way, uh, the cigar itself, I really like the cigar seed. Yeah, um, you know, I don't know if you do this for me or if you do this for other guests or how much thought you put into us, but this cigar is unique. It's different for me. Yes, I, you know, normally we do like a Monte Cristo or something like that, just something that's, and maybe that's what the Romeo might be a little later on, might just be smooth, consistent. Yeah. Stuff like Straight that. medium strength. Yeah. yeah. But the cigar itself, um, I've never tasted a cigar like this. I like, I would like to have this just by itself. Personally, I think just by itself, it's, it's, it's an eight. Um, it's unique. How, how much is this cigar? So it's going to be in that, that 11, 12. Okay. For 11 to 12 bucks. I think this is a great cigar. Yeah. Uh, together, you know, it's, it's whether you add water to it or not, it's whether you have them mm -hmm. separately or together. You know, I think that they both, um, not that they cancel out each other, but they definitely enhance different aspects of it together. You know, you do get a lot more cinnamon out of the bourbon than you do, and you get less funk out of the cigar when you have the bourbon with it. So together, I might go an eight, and I think that's that's a fair rating for both of them, in my mind. I think it is. Nate, how about you? So on the, I do like this pick uh, more than just regular Buffalo Trace. Mm -hmm. I'll agree with you guys on that. Um, for this bottle. Uh, I'm a eight on this one. Uh, uh, that's that's that, high praise. Yeah, that uh, that note I said earlier, where it had kind of that young or tannin taste to it, I more I was able to actually pinpoint it almost like a pine mm. taste. So for those playing the bourbon and BS podcast, so that, that might be the, the that might be the floral. There, that might your, be the floral a little bit. Yeah, but that was. But Steve had read that about the cigar. Yeah. Just the whiskey. That's kind of what it is. So for those playing the drinking game, there, take a sip for the weird note. Um, How much prune do you get? <laughs> no. uh, on, on the cigar love the dark fruits you love dark fruits on the cigar i'm an eight on the cigar as well um medium to full body full flavor uh having that you said it's a broadleaf binder yeah so like broadleaf binder well constructed yes oh very very good construction uh what's interesting is because the brazilian wrapper and then the nicaraguan filler doesn't have that dryness or that bite that you get from some cigars that have a broadleaf wrapper on them. So, but it, it adds an, it adds another unique level of flavor to the cigar. Um, as far as the pairing, uh, this is one of those where the cigar and the whiskey are different, but they complement each other very well. Agreed. I'm a nine on the pairing. Attaboy. Um, Attaboy. Uh, because, and I, I noticed it. Russian on vacation. <laughs> no, I noticed it because I did the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's the two weeks of summer. I gave it a Russian four, <laughs> a fucking four. No, I, no, I noticed that I I did it uh, last week or two weeks ago 
where I did the whiskey and then the cigar and the cigar second brought more of that cinnamon spice uh, out of the, the whiskey and that finish. But if I did the cigar and then the whiskey, I got more sweetness out of the whiskey. Hmm. So do you get any sweetness out of the cigar? No, I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. There, I was just curious. But but that's what's great is by doing the the cigar and then the whiskey, I do get that sweetness. So if you're someone who who, you know, if you were drinking the the whiskey by itself, and you weren't tasting that sweetness, drinking the you know smoking the cigar and then drinking the whiskey brings out more. It highlights the sweetness of the whiskey. Yeah. Nice. I I think. Um... So anytime that you can have a just neat pour of a bottle of, of any spirit um, that is, has not been, you know, I don't want to say altered, but, you know, we talked about the, that Basil Hayden's and we talked about, I mentioned, you know, being down at High Bank Distillery here in Columbus, Ohio, you know, that, that midnight cask. If I can take just a straight up mash bill of, of, a, of a whiskey and it finds a, a cocktail, I think that's especially like you know spencer brought up the price point i think that it's something that one of these when you can just pour it and if you, if you throw an ice cube in it like you, you yeah. it's an enjoyable cocktail yeah not everyone's looking for that you know like you know we talked about i know like dustin and like some of like jake sanders who was a co-founder of the podcast a lot of people out there they want that barrel proof they want that heat they want it to like kind of taste like whiskey but also punish them a little bit you know mm-hmm. what i mean this mm-hmm. is not for them Right. This is not for them. This is going to be something that this is actually enjoyable through and through if you like the flavors. And and I think everyone in the garage, for the most part, has agreed. Like the sweetness is very pleasant. You know what yeah. I mean? You got that, especially in the beginning, you have that kind of lingering faint cinnamon or the the, the heat. The the, the it, It's just very enjoyable. So I would give the bottle definitely an eight. You know, yeah. this is something that <clears throat> it doesn't blow me away, but it is very, very enjoyable. And I mean, that's for me on my rating scale, that is kind of what I'm looking for yeah. is I want to be able to enjoy the, the poor. I don't want to have to, you know, really dive into it all the time. This is an everyday drinker type of a thing that for sure. Yeah. This is yeah. something that, you know, it may not be your, your favorite nightcap after a long day and you all, you know, you, it's not the most complex. It's not going to be that, that thing that kind of puts not you very to sleep. Oaky or anything like yeah. That. But it's very enjoyable. So, I mean, it's it's a win for me. Is the term you're looking for related to the, the bourbon kind of like untouched or just more like because it is coming out of a single barrel, it's not going through any type of more complex well, I'm just say- process? Or- I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that if I'm going to buy a bottle of whiskey, bourbon or otherwise, if it has that, like this has that sweetness that, that again, it's it's non-offensive. Yeah. You know, it's it's very pleasant. That's that's an easy pour. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I think there's, all day, there's, every day. Yeah, I, I think this is yeah, this is a great morning whiskey. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we need to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think seasonally too, it really does. I wake up if you morning. put a if you put a celery <laughs> stalk in this. Waking up, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, for a cup. warm <laughs> for a warm weather drinkable summertime, like I think good, the, good choice on I like this. where where we are for sure. I think yeah. it's I think it's spot on for I sure. And fantastic. and I and I think you're you're right. You feel good about the price point, right? Like you're getting yeah. something that's you know. 27 yeah. bucks before tax to get a barrel pick for 30 bucks. You're yeah, killing yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, and then, so with the cigar, I, I'm going to give the cigar an eight as well. This is a very, I think we touched on it as a group. This is a very unique cigar, the, uh, the makeup of it. And, uh, it's funny. Nate is similar to some other people about that Connecticut broadleaf. I really enjoy Connecticut broadleaf. Same as a rapper. Same. Um, I know. Uh, so Brian Joyce, who was on the podcast one time, uh, he's the owner of the center box. He, he's not a fan of the broadleaf. I think he likes a few cigars that he's surprised that it is a broadleaf wrapper. Um, but I think that's a, a leaf that I really enjoy. I do get a little bit of that in this. Um, there is a little bit, especially the the aroma of the smoke coming off of it when you light it, is uh, it's got some characteristics of the Liga Pravada number no. nine, which is made by Drew Estate. I do get a little bit of that. It's not the same, but I get that a, a little bit of the the aroma to that. Same factory, and and again, you got that broadleaf, right? So I think it's it's actually a very um, unique and enjoyable cigar as far as that goes. On its own, because I have smoked it before, I, I've I mentioned I think you get more of the unique spice mm-hmm. to it. I think you get a little bit more depth of the cigar. 
but on its own, I think about an eight. I think the pairing is is also um, across the board an eight. I think this is something, and again, everyone's touched on it. I mentioned it earlier. It, it alters both parties, right? So it, it's drinking this on its own, smoking this on its own, both enjoyable. But I think it a- absolutely changes the experience of both products in a good way. It's a different experience. Did, did you have any the- thought with the cigar of picking this out for this? You know, I... One, we haven't done it before. Two, I think it's a, a fascinating blend of, of tobacco. I think it's, it's, it's again, unique is what the term I think everyone's utilizing here. I didn't know what this bottle, this barrel was going to taste like. I thought, honestly, it may go south pretty quickly because it might be too much spice or mm-hmm. heat from both the cigar and a typical bottle of Buffalo Trace. So that's where I'm being an eight. I think this I'm. I'm more pleasantly surprised that this this went as well as it did and and complements yet kind of takes away. It's 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 interesting. So for those of you listening to this, one thing I'd encourage, and I'm glad we touched on it, is that any any whiskey that you see out there, if you don't like like if you don't like Buffalo Trace typically and you see a barrel pick, yeah, maybe not when it's a $80 bottle of something. If you don't like it, maybe don't go for the barrel pick. But if it's a $30 bottle and you're not a huge fan of Buffalo Trace, worth a shot. It's worth a shot getting yeah. a barrel pick yeah. at a store, at a bar, or whatever it is. Most barrel picks are worth a shot. I think so. Yeah. It's not something so. you can never try again. Yeah. So the, our reviews, obviously, you may not be able to duplicate entirely, but uh, obviously, we, we've tried to rate the uh, cigar and the whiskey separately as well. So uh, that being said, guys, you know, part one coming to a close. I want to thank uh, Jake for being here, coming down here, visiting, bringing the, these bottles. I actually took a pour of the Ezra Brooks, so I'm looking forward to that with this yes, cigar because I still have about half the cigar. So as we get into the intermission and also part two, I'm going to enjoy seeing how that changes the cigar. Um, but I do want to thank our sponsors, first and foremost, uh, patreon.com slash bourbon BS podcast. You guys really make this worthwhile doing all you guys viewing and, and listening on the audio, sharing it, liking it, reviewing is amazing. If you want to take it to another level, there's a $5 tier, a $10 tier, and a $25 tier. Or you can be like some of the Patreon uh, members that do a one-time do- donation or contribution and then pull back for a few what, months. What do you get for 10 or 25 just out of curiosity? So the way it was originally designed in this whole year, just like anything, 2020 in the last year has really kind of fucked it all been, up. been normal? It's been super normal. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it was unfortunate because like the shirt that you're wearing, Spencer, for those that aren't listening or aren't, aren't viewing it, they're listening on the audio – He's got flex, the, flex a little bit more. When the, Not flexing. <laughs> he's got a shirt that says, uh, when the world hands you some BS, light it up. And that was a 2020 shirt that uh, I came up with when, when I was drinking. Um, <laughs> also the shirt that I'm wearing. Are all the shirts come up when you're drinking? Uh, a lot of them. A lot of them. The BS silver shirt, which is focused on the silver lining. Did you say focus? Focus. 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 Take a focus. drink. Focus. But no, so what I'm saying is, so the shirt I'm wearing, for those who haven't seen this color scheme, this was one of the prototypes I did when I made those shirts with the printer that we were supporting someone local. Nice. And, and well, sadly, he's in uh, Johnstown, which is a smaller town just outside of Columbus. And a lot of his business were, were with schools and everything else. He kind of had quit a career to do this as a, a new passion. And so right when he was doing these, that was about it. He was done. Mm. He had to sell the equipment and he had to go back to his, his previous work. Uh, and, and so it's unfortunate. So we were working with talking to other um, T-shirt uh, companies and uh, hopefully we'll get that out there. But to your to your point, originally we'd set up if you do five dollar tier after six months, you get a T-shirt. Uh, Ten dollars tier would be three months and twenty five dollars tiers. We able to get it out to you. Nice, bro. I uh, actually I need to work on this with uh, Bourbon and Blondes. They have a contact in St. Louis that their printer will do it as people order it. Mm-hmm. So as opposed to us having to get that's it, a good, like I've that's still a got good, some good two people X, to know. I got some two X's inside from the original lighter gray with the dark. Well, if you keep lifting, <clears throat> I got a guy for that too. He has his own screen printing company that would do something like the one offs is the yeah. best thing to, that we'd be able yeah. to do. Cause then I can actually, I can order it and have them shipped straight to that. So yeah. we're working on that. But in the meantime, the support is amazing. That's what I've been that's trying awesome. to do the raffles that uh, thanks to Altidus for that. Uh, and with that being said, uh, other sponsors, Tinderbox at Easton, this Herrera Rest Elite Brazil is fantastic. 15% off at Tinderbox at Easton in Columbus, Ohio. Now until next Wednesday, 
And if you guys are out of town, just uh, email eastontinderbox at gmail.com and they will be able to send you out. Typically, we want to do about five cigars to make the shipping worthwhile to you guys. And then also Altidus USA. I mentioned Josh Bentley. He's been a big supporter. He's the one that got us all these raffle prizes from Altidus USA. Attaboy. And also the uh, second cigar of the night, which is the Reserva Real Nicaragua from Romeo y Julieta, which is one of their big brands. Also, be a cigar company. Um, guys, check them out on social media as well. And then also, if you're in the Columbus area, they're available exclusively right now at uh, Tinderbox at Easton, as well as in town, Royale uh, Cigar Lounge. Royale? And Royale carries the BS Gold. Nice. So, yeah, so fantastic support from them. But, guys, thank you very much uh, for part one. We're going to get into Pick Right Up is, is what we called it, yep. right? This right is a, a topic that I think will uh, relate to you guys. You might hear some stupid stories from us, but hopefully it'll be entertaining. If you're listening on the live feed, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to do the intermission. We're going to do the raffle pick for Patreon. And then also uh, we would look forward to you guys commenting and contributing to the conversation. So if you guys are listening on the audio after the fact, you'll drive it in your car, whatever. Uh, if you're free on Wednesday nights around 730 or so for a couple to a few hours, we do this live on Facebook Live and also YouTube Live. So thank you guys very much. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Whiskey Wednesday. Cheers, gentlemen. Welcome home, Wilk. Absolutely. I, uh, very I, different than Ezra Brooks. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I, <laughs> very I, I, I actually like a Buffalo Trace better. Do you really? with this cigar? Yes. Oh, with the cigar. Yes. But do you like the Ezra as it is? Oh, <sighs> you know, it's, it's it's a bit more there. Yeah. It is so it's good. Very it? good. Yeah. yeah I wanted to good. get you because that's right Dustin, where you went. Dustin, you, are you patron? Yeah. Okay. Have Dustin. Yeah, he hasn't been here in a little while. Yeah, huh? I'd like to get my fucking name picked at some point here, guys. Oh. It's five dollars a month. It's fucking killing me. Hey, you got a shirt. Yeah, you got, you got, you got, and you, and you got two cigars tonight. Yeah, and you guys got fucking microphones. I don't know what to say. We did. Yeah. So, are we still live here, or what's happening? We are live right now. Yes. Oh, okay. This yes. I will not. I got you. Luckily, not hear any of this on the podcast. It. You won't hear any. You of like this. the Ezra though, doesn't? It makes me want to uh, go back to the Ezra Seven. Okay. Which is what I have. Which Ezra is this? All right. I think it's a five. Before we get too derailed here. Uh, Dustin. Yep. Pick a number between one and twenty, including one or twenty. I'm pick seventeen. Three. Three. That number three would be, and I just saw him comment. He said, "Keep lifting." Ha! Great My story. man. He deserves something. Yeah, <laughs> he's got it. You'll get him that Axel. Grant. Uh, is it, is it Sewell? Sewell? Sewell. Sewell. Uh, so. Grant, if we mispronounced uh, it, but uh, Grant is, let's see here. Seriously, no, it is good. I he has been a patron for now two months. Two complete. Oh, no, more than that. Very much. Let's see. That was why I also brought that because I wanted to have something very different. But uh, Grant's been with us now for so three months as a ten dollar a month patron. So, Grant, you got a what was it, a Trinidad Domino set as well as a Warhawk bottle opener so that's uh email me i don't know where you're at and here. also a uh, chicago bears floor mat <laughs> no bear, bear down gardening bear, cheers. Bear down. <laughs> if you like extra the home defense has been used i've been using that a little bit we have an extra door <laughs> it's broke. half a closet door. Yeah, if you got a bifold uh closet that you, <laughs> if need, you got uh, a bifold closet that needs a door and a little bit of a knee hole in it <laughs> no and I think I was unfair to the Buffalo. I, All I, right, just stand yeah, by. Yeah, it's okay. Stand I think by. You're right. Yeah, I think you're right. Though, but Grant, where are you at? So you, mo- you're commenting. Thank you very much for the it's support and watching. So but just if, give me. If Nate's hammering something, it's six or below. Mm-hmm. If I'm hammering something, I, I think it's fair. It's it's six or below. I I've had an eight in sand, and I I did not dislike it as much as you guys did. But I, I've had it about a year ago, and I bought it for what it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, you get you, to that same price point. I mean, there are some other bottles yeah. out there that get that same price point or lower that are. Did you think it was unique tasting at all, or not? It just funk young, just it, not for you. Well, I mean, it was, it was definitely. Unique. I ended up pouring the rest of it into an infinity bottle. If that tells there you, you anything about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, Grant is in. Oh, Ray Chester out there. He says nothing interesting enough to comment. So hopefully we can entertain him in the second part. Thanks, Ray. Ray, thank you for your service again. Appreciate <laughs> you out there in Vietnam. Uh, always, always 
show and show. No, thank you for, for tuning in, Ray. I know uh, this is uh, something you enjoy every week, so thank you very much. What are you uh, drinking and smoking out there, Ray, in the morning? Huh? Yeah. Right. yeah, I'm going to. You're in the head? Yeah, it's going to be. Did you want me to go? No, I'm just saying it's going to be an hour, hour and a half of you yeah, uh, you crying good. crying into your bottle. Heavy, heavy blare. Well, hurry up. Just... Are you? I mean, the, he can be entertained with a bone. You can entertain these people with something. Go ahead. Give him a bone. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and review this. I know, uh, Ray, you're out there. Tell us what you are uh, drinking and smoking. Guys, share this uh, part two as we get into it. We got a little bit of a uh, potty break. Drinking coffee, not smoking. Well, maybe that's the problem, Ray. Maybe light up a cigar, man. Nate, did you get to pull off the Ezra at all, or no? No, I, I mean, I've had a couple different You've had, okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. I really like the uh, the Ezra 99. Okay. Which, when it first came into Ohio, it was a $25 bottle, and now it's a $22 bottle. Dustin, you got a fan out there. Which is interesting. So, it went from 25 to 22 Hmm. Old tubs went from 22 to 25. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I have noticed some really interesting price fluctuations recently. Just, yeah. I don't know well, if it's a demand supply demand thing or, or. I think it's a demand thing. One of the yeah. more interesting ones when we featured David Nicholson, the Hunter Proof, when that first came into Ohio, that was a $40 bottle. Right. And then it won some awards. So we were like, oh shit. This they can't hear you. So this is just dead noise in the background. <laughs> Says the guy that he always count, like tells like Shannon them to you have a mic. Well, here, this yeah. part isn't going to be on the. But there's recording. people listening. I don't want to lose them all. No. So David Nicholson was one of those that when we featured it on the podcast, it was a forty dollar bottle and it had won some awards. So we thought that was going to be the next one that take off, and it was going to be hard to get. It was going to yep. jump up to fifty or more, and it went down to thirty five dollars. Yeah. So, so how? Sorry, sorry for interjecting. What what dictates? I know taxes is a big piece of it, but like what would dictate me being able to buy this bottle in Michigan when I got it a year ago for twenty six ninety nine versus seeing the same bottle, same select barrel pick from from Buffalo Trace to being like forty five dollars in Maryland. For so example. it's uh, it's the different laws of the states. Right. So in Ohio, Ohio is a price controlled state. OK, so every bottle of Buffalo Trace, whether it's a regular Buffalo Trace or a store pick. Is going to be the same price, which is what I experienced. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now in Michigan, they have a minimum. Okay. So in Michigan, they have a minimum price that you have to sell a bottle at. Okay. Uh, and then I, I think there's a limit as to how high up they can market. But then you were talking about seeing other Buffalo Trace picks, like in Maryland. Right. Maryland's not a price controlled state. I see. So they can charge whatever they want for. And if that, they're serving a different level of clientele or yeah. they have, yeah yeah, yeah. and gotcha. and that's why you'll see uh you know some places that have weller green which is a same price as buffalo trace or even cheaper but in other states they try you know liquor stores try and sell that bottle from 100 to 200 dollars. well i'll mention it too like eagle rare coming from buffalo trace right so this is something that here in the state of ohio it's about 35 dollars mid 30s whatever it is right now 32.99 yeah, so, tax. yeah it, it's in that mid 30s range well, when my my neighbors across the street, right, okay. they they were uh, down in Florida, and he uh, he sent me a picture of of a liquor store they were at, and he said, "Hey, you want me to pick you up anything?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, you were rare." And then I like I sent it, and then I zoomed in on it, and it was eighty five dollars. Nope. And I said, "Cancel that order." It's crazy. Yeah. He said, "I thought it seemed high." He's not a big bourbon guy, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But I, yeah, yeah, so I told him that eighty five is even higher than what you can get the uh, one point seven five of eagle rare for right. msrp at least right yeah so, so I mean, it's just it's all state by state is to, yeah. to answer your okay. question and that that speeds back to the t- we've talked about it where one of the benefits of being in a price controlled state is no prices be every single store you go to but there are some stuff either a little harder for us to get or you have people that it's such a good deal that they are going to wait in line for two hours before the truck shows up to get it right interesting what would you expect to pay for that that bottle of Ezra Brooks? I don't remember what that went for. Um, fifty? I was gonna say fifty or sixty. I think it's about fifty. Was it? I I want to say I got it for around forty. Okay. Maybe maybe, maybe thirty eight ninety nine sticks in my head. Or how something how like old that. is that Ezra? I don't know, it says on What's the, the age statement. 
I agree with Dustin. Ezra Seven is just so good. Yeah. Dude, what do you what do you got in the backpack there, bro? Whiskey. Yeah, but I mean, I was asking for a friend. All right. <laughs> I figured it was something tall. Small badge, Uncle Nearest. I like the story of Uncle Nearest. I'm not convinced on the taste of it. Oh, there he is. Blends. All yeah, right. It's a good yeah, selection. Yeah. It's just yeah, yeah. He knows. All right. Here we go. <laughs> you guys ready? Let's do this. Can we get back on track? All right. There you go. Wild turkey rack. If they sold this shit at Bed Bath Beyond, you'd be going nuts. Just twenty percent off, just fucking everything. Just nuts. With a coupon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With a big. <laughs> exactly. With the big five by nine postcard. What, what's the best thing you got from last call ever? Uh, the Ezra Brooks, hundred percent rye. Oh boy, there you go. Well done, Bob. That's fantastic. All right, and scene. Welcome back to the Bourbon and BS podcast, everyone. This is episode 172, (laughs) part two. Uh, We've had some pours of the Buffalo Trace uh, single barrel pick from uh, Bushes in Michigan Yep. that uh, Jake brought with him. So uh, if you guys are just tuning in, didn't hear uh, part one, we got Jake Wilk in the garage from Michigan. He used to live here. And uh, we got Spencer Lappin again uh, at the table. I got to get on with some of those coffee guys. Jenny Java? Yeah. They're good people. I mean, the energy they those kids yeah. bring. Dude, well, I, gotta get, I gotta get all those fuckers. Stay <laughs> caffeinated. I mean, not, not too fucking caffeinated. But, yeah. <laughs> caffeinated. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Jenny Java, those guys, AJ and Daniel are fantastic. It was a great episode. They're killing it. Um, love having you guys on here in the garage, Jake. Love having you back in Ohio. Yeah. Definitely miss you. Um, we're, we're talking about today, pick right up, which, Wilk, you, you were the one that, that kind of came up with couple ideas and i really like this one we can kind of talk about your other one as well sure but this is something that uh, you know everyone has i think people in their lives um, and we can go on to also where we're at now as a country and world as well yep. but uh, everyone has these these people in in their lives and and i feel like the three of us are exactly that don't talk all the time um i know wilk you and I have stayed in touch, but you know we used to see each other every week at right. least. Right. Sometimes twice a week in the summertime when yep. we were watching NFL Sundays, we'd get together, Playing watch the softball. Lions, and then we played softball Do you together. Miss Jake yelling at you on the softball field? I never had to yell at Steve. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> he always knew. So <laughs> he always knew. Also, is that if I fucked up and I didn't hit well or I didn't uh, um, field all that well in left field, he didn't need to. Like I was gonna be tougher on myself yeah. than he ever could. Did yeah. you ever hit the cutoff, man? A couple times. <laughs> As I got older, I think yes. Pretty consistently, yeah. I, when you needed to, you hit. The yeah. Man. Earlier in my career, when I still thought I. He's could, going a third. I got it. Baby. I got it. <laughs> that was probably my, especially when I was playing, still playing third base. Because when you're playing third base, you're not really hitting cutoffs unless there's a play at it's home. Called the, it's called the hot corner. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. Some like it hot. Um, and when. A first to third happened, and it was because the cutoff man wasn't hit to cut down the guy, or an extra base went to second base. Um, yeah, that was my probably s- stiffest criticism of Stevie ever in our softball playing careers. But we also have several trophies to make we it do. much easier to not really dwell on those times. That's cool. We, they we get had a part- lot of winning. That's cool. They get participation trophies <laughs> at that. Age. That's awesome. No, man. we actually did really well. And it's always fun <laughs> because it's something that uh, anytime on Facebook, if uh, any of the 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 team the crew, yeah. has a has a birthday or whatever. I just it always shows up with four years ago or five. Yeah, yeah. yeah whenever yeah. it was like yeah. because I'm tagged in the same photo, or whatever. I'm like, hey, yeah. happy birthday to a fellow champion. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's it's really kind of it's neat because anytime we get together, it's a quick kind of get up to speed. How's everything going? And then it just falls back into to place. Yeah, which I think is a good thing. Uh, other situations, it could be hindering. I think a little bit mm-hmm. on growth, but I think with with you guys. And something like Ray Cheshire out there, you know, I've known Ray for a long time and he's been out of the country for a very long time in the last few years doing this podcast, there's been a reconnection there as well. Yeah. You know, especially over the last year when we didn't always have to be somewhere the next day. Um, there was something that we would do a lot of these video chats after the fact, or if we we're doing like with the bourbon and BS community page, which is on Facebook. If you guys aren't familiar with that, uh, join that great group, about 14, 1500 members of that Ray is on there nice. as well. Good work, Steve. And it's, it's just nice to have that like reconnection. And then you just, you can be honest with people that I feel like you've been honest with before. Yeah. 
but you don't always reach out to them. Spencer, on the other hand, for me, um, being closer, we, we see each other, I don't want to say all the time, but it is semi-regularly. It's not enough. Um, you're traveling a lot for work. I've got monthly a, every, every couple of months, yeah, yeah, every yeah. couple of months, sometimes yeah. more often Sometimes it goes in spurts. But one of the things I will say, you know, picking right up uh, or picking back up where you left off a lot of times when uh, you go through some shit too, yeah. you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, or like when you were buying a house and we used, when you have life events happen, yeah. there are people in your life that you may not talk to every other day or every week, but when stuff's going on, you know, some people in your life that will give you straight yeah yeah very straight yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll shoot you straight they'll they'll give you an honest opinion they'll they're not just going to give you what you want right and i think i think the topic has a lot of kind of tentacles and, and ways that we can take it but the reason why i thought about it for the three of us is that we can go and mind you COVID happened and you know, allegedly allegedly All right. um and it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not turning into that episode um but no i, I mean <clears throat> you go from having your regular cadence of seeing people and, and some people got closer through that because you were more intentional about video chatting and doing like i don't know that we probably would have thought to do the draft over video chat in 2020 like we did other than like I need some connection with, right. you know, people. 100%. Um, but I think the, the, the core or the genesis of this topic for me with you guys specifically is that just like what Stevie just said, you could spend months, even in this case, years, not seeing someone, you do the quick kind of catch up introduction, but then there's a level of, of comfort and, and warmth and familiarity that, that at least washes over me when I'm in the presence of some of those people right. that I know right. I can pick right back up with. Um, and, and I think the core of that is that, that, that familial feeling um, where we've shared a lot of really good times. We've also shared a lot of really deep conversations and, and, and then deep moments of our lives together. Um, you know, I spent, Spence, I never forget your face uh, the first time you came over to my old house and you met my son Henry for the first time. And just the way that, you know, you interacted with him and he took to you at a very young age, um, you know, he looks very much like me. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later. Um, but no, I think all of those connections, those bonds, the great times we've had, you know, we've alluded to the, the Sunday fun days downtown or playing softball several years together. Yeah. Um, and then choosing to spend special times together. You know, we used to have a, a quarterly, if not more frequently, fancy steak dinner at different places around town um, because we wanted to, not, not because there was any obligation to do so or, you know, we were, we were pulling at straws to put schedules together, but like. Hey, well, I got to say, together. you bring that yeah. up, too. I mean, that's something that I, it kind of intertwines with what I was saying, too, is I remember the first gentleman's dinner, I think, was at Jay Gilbert's. That's exactly right. Yep. And you I were knew, in a transition. I knew, I knew Spencer pretty well. No, no, no. I knew we, we, we really just well. We just met at and Jay Gilbert's. And I think Gilbert's. Brayer was a part of it, who's been on the podcast I, I just before. met you at Jay Gilbert's. Wilk, were you at that one? Mm-mm. This is this is ten plus years ago. This is pre. This is pre- no, eight, 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 nine, eight plus about nine years. Ago. Nine years ago, yeah. So you were switching years. to, Tinder. and yeah. So I had just went through a major life transition, too. Actually, I was you know prior to that I went through a divorce. So then I was in this like rocky relationship. You were so post- cool back then, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, yep, yep. I'll take that as a compliment. Also an insult, but I uh, I also had just uh, lost my job after over ten years. Yeah. Wow. And so that was, you know, something that you sit down at a table. I did. I get you right. I didn't know Spencer as well, but you have these people in your life that, at that point, as we've all known with Spencer being on the podcast, he he asks very good questions. Yeah. It's very selfless. It's very much um, genuine interest in hearing something and hearing someone out. And then if they want to hear um, feedback or, or you, do you want my opinion type thing. Right. And that was something that really stuck with me. You brought up the gentlemen's dinners, then those progressed. And this is a very good example. Even when we all lived in the same town, life gets in the way yep. in a sense. And then all of a sudden it's like, we need to schedule it. Yeah. And then you get together and it's within about five, 10 minutes. It's just like we right hang there. out every other night. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a lot of those really cool nights and fun nights. And, and, and as time has progressed and schedules have gotten in the way and responsibilities have gotten in the way, um, it's almost like some of that goes away. Like I have a right. million emails that I've ignored since three o'clock today. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are always going to be pressing, but if you can allow yourself to remove and detach and really be present in those moments, um, I have a lot of great active memories of all the, the times we shared and the conversations we've had in the last we've had, because I think of the, the company we chose to keep and also the ability for all of us to, to genuinely care about each other's best interests. And, and also, um, I think, you Spencer or Steve, you said it good about Spencer in that 
not only is a good question asker, but he's also a really good active listener. And and he does a, a lot of engaging Let with you, you off right around there. the topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Sorry, go ahead. Jake. No, I, that, that's it. I mean, you, you do a good job of, you know, making sure that we are present and making sure that we are actually able to experience something in that moment, not to be too like vague or generic. But I think I think that's a really good way to sum up, you know, a lot of the bond and connection that we've been able to build and share over the years, for sure. I got Ray out there. He says, uh, you know, I mentioned him earlier, Ray Cheshire. It's because of how my life has run its course. And I assume he's talking about not only career and relationship changes and then also relocating around the world, right. around the globe. Right. So he says, how it's run uh, its course. I only have any connection with people who I'm able to pick right up with. Exactly right. You so know, I think I, that's, that's a, the neat point. I, I personally don't know Ray uh, <clears throat> personally. But, you know, I, I listen to every podcast, you know, I listen yep. on, on two speed for emotional reasons versus anything else. It's okay, buddy. But, you know, having a guy like that, who's literally, you know, halfway, more than halfway across the world, you know, being able to hear him, you know, comment on this every week and post on the bourbon and BS page, you feel like, you know, these people. Right. And, you know, Steve, we haven't seen each other for a couple of months, but, you know, being able to hear you every week, being able to hear, you know, raise questions, comments, things like that, being able to see what, what he's doing with his life. It does. It, it's a weird thing with social media because you feel like, you know, this is the first time I met Tony, the dog. Right. You're, you're I shouldn't say the dog, uh, your dog. My, yeah. Um, but I feel like I know him because I see your stories. I see him on a daily basis and you feel like, you know, him. but until you're actually with them. Yeah. You know, it's a big difference between seeing somebody's kids grow up on social media. Right. You know, seeing it, Jake, you know, through your page or through your wife's page versus being in front of those kids in person. And I think that's something that we have to, you know, figure out the right balance. Like what is, you know, real life outside, you know, online versus actually seeing somebody in person, is there a difference and what that difference is, or do you have less stuff to talk about? Do you have more stuff to talk right. about because you see somebody in person, but Hey, I know what's going on in your life. I know what's going on in your life, but is do there, you really? Yeah. No, that's a really good. I didn't even think about that when I that's thought about this. Trace there. When I thought about the topic, this one's <laughs> the open one. Be fine. Um, yeah, we'll check out your both. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have this preponderance of of Jesus, always knowing twelve dollars. Oh, you're welcome. Um, yeah. Preponderance of knowing what's going on in people's lives artificially. I guess yeah. you know, like yes, you're connected to these people. Um, but does that give you an easier way to pick right up with them when you actually see them in person, or is it more? awkward because you don't have the screen in front of you to be your your filter or your lens you know what i mean like i think it defaults back to the true connection and the bond you actually have with that person to be able to interpersonally connect when you when you are back with them versus with, with, yeah with my true friends i i definitely enjoy the in person more Agreed. Me too. but you know i'm friends with people on social media that, you know i haven't seen in 20 we years have like five thousand six thousand friends I, you know it's not a competition <laughs> eight uh <laughs> But, you know, the, these people, what, is, they, what they, does K mean after a number? Is it like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm glad that Instagram's taking away the likes, you know, just for, for selfish reasons like this. But it's a weird thing with people that you haven't seen that aren't part of your life for 20 plus years, but you know exactly what's going on in their life. You know, when I had my, this is maybe going off track a little bit, but, you know, I had my high school reunion 20 years ago for our 10 year. No, that's not true. For How old are math you? is not your sub strong subject. Isn't it? When I had my high school reunion for my 10 year reunion, yeah. I didn't know what anyone was doing, right? What anyone was doing. And now I feel like I know what everyone's doing, but I haven't seen any like 95% of those people in the past 10 years. So it's like, I know what they're up to, yeah. but I have no actual physical relationship with them. Well, so <clears throat> here, here's what I'll say to the, first of all, when I went to my 10 year reunion, uh, that would have been in 2008. So Facebook was really, really grabbing a hold. It was still yeah, called was, the Facebook. No, no, I'm just saying it went from, you know, being like college kids to right. everyone, right? right? So this right. is, and I remember there was one person, I wasn't even really friends with her in, in high school, but we were Facebook friends and I saw her at the reunion. And I'm like, I feel like I already know your kids. Hmm. So that was something and now we're going back over a decade ago. And that hmm. was something that was already apparent then. I also, and, and I say this not, not for my own, you know, self-reveal necessarily but at that time i was going through marriage counseling hmm. and and i was there with my wife my ex-wife excuse me like my wife at the time and and her and i you know we we went there and it was a good night we went with a couple of the the high school what buddies was your that thoughts I, on bringing her um at the time 
I, I wanted to do it, but it was definitely a unique situation. She I thought, didn't know anyone from your She didn't. Yeah. She I, didn't. Yeah, there was so a, we, were we had somebody that things. did that too. Yeah, so we were working on things. But I guess to to the point I'm trying to make is is that when I when I look at some some people, I know again, life takes control sometimes, but I think we also allow it. Okay. So it's like these these connections through social media, whatever it might be, or all that stuff. You know, and Wilk, I don't want to necessarily dive into you as much, but I know we've talked about it, that when you moved away, it was for very good intentions. And then we, I remember I remember yeah. at that we were watching the draft, right? So we were watching the draft. And I'm not going to like say anything. It wasn't anything super negative or anything like that. But there was a little bit of, um, I guess, disappointment that the move up to see family and yeah. be close and all that stuff you had personally as, as, a, as a man you prioritized obviously your family yep and yet when we spoke i remember i think it was that night yep you know between the draft and after the draft is that it wasn't what you expected and you had sacrificed other very important parts of your life not more important than your family but important parts of your life that made you who you were yeah and so i, I guess i want to kind of introduce the the part of this is that is it always worth it to just let life take control your yeah. career your family life is there a way that do we do you think that sometimes is it worth having to sacrifice other things do we do we as as people typically really evaluate the decision with all things considered or you just say this is more important i'm gonna go do it and then that's why there are things like a very high divorce rate there's a, there's a lot of like midlife crisis there's yeah. a lot of health issues it's like you basically you, you, I don't want to say you made a mistake, but you didn't take all factors into consideration or, or a way that you could handle, all right, so this is what I'm going to lose. Yeah. Well, I think it goes to your conversation. I, I know you have something to say here that's much more important than this here at Woke, but it has to go with the prioritizing. And you guys had that, what, uh, last week or a couple of Reprioritizing was Reprioritizing. Yeah, so absolutely. he chose certain priorities, which uh, were more and could be were our more important to him than other priorities. And as you get older, you got to choose what's what priorities you got to put in front, yep. whether it's location, whether it's certain family members, whether it's certain friends, but what really matters to you to live the the best life that you can. And, you know, you hope you make the right decisions and then you, you kind of figure it out from there. Yeah, no, there's a lot to to, to unpack and respond to there, but I've had- I this... got like an hour and a 15 minutes. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I, I, I think some of it has Perfect to go. Night. It is yeah. great out by the breeze is awesome. Um, I think there's, uh, <laughs> I think there's a lot of decisions you make in your life that you can always hindsight or, or, but I remember vividly that first year plus post moving back to Michigan away from Columbus. Um, I had a lot of personal regret um, because I missed you guys. I missed my network, uh, professional network that I had built around Columbus, um, where I could go literally the first time I came back to Columbus, I went to three different bars downtown and I saw 10 different people that I had not no intention of seeing that were all from like maybe four or five different connections that I had around town. And it's you a big city. A network. Yeah, it's a big city. But if you're in certain circles, it's a small town, you know, and, 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 um, I had a lot of sadness after that first visit back. So I was like, damn, I miss being able to walk into a bar and seeing right. someone that I would always see randomly, even if it was only maybe once a quarter or however often it was, like you have that familiarity and that home and that connection. Um, and I feel like I definitely sacrificed that for mostly my children. I, I have two boys. Um, my oldest is turning six in a couple of weeks, which is crazy to think about. That um, is crazy yeah. About. And then my youngest is, is four and a half. And um, I remember having a similar deep sadness after my youngest was born in 2016. Well, that shouldn't be the feeling. Well, no, my sadness was that <laughs> my sadness was that my my family wasn't going to be around to experience them and, and and experience the joy and experience the relationship of having them as a consistent presence presence in their lives. And so that was my big motive. And that still still is the the, the trump card of why we did it is because yep. I wanted my children Closer to, to grandparents to have a bond with my parents. My, uh, my siblings, uh, my wife's family are all from the same area. So Ray says, you know, you can only ever prioritize when decision making, you can't always align everything, then you have to commit to your choices. Yep. That's typically where people fail. And I, uh, I guess I would maybe just dis not disagree, but be curious as to where he's going with that. Because I don't know. Uh, well, Jake well, and his specific 
but Jake case I, yeah, did but, not fail. But I guess yeah. no, I don't think he's saying Jake did. I'm saying that you know, because they don't commit and they always like is, is, the is, right? is the, so is the grass is, greener on the other side? Yeah, type deal. I no, I think that I think for me it's it's a win. I like that. Yeah, that's it's a cool feature, by the way. I like yeah. it. Um, it's a it's a win. Um, it's a win for my children and the relationship they get to have with my parents and our family members mm-hmm. and like to see the bond my sons have with my dad and my wife's family and certain people that have taken advantage of us being home is phenomenal. Immeasurable. Exactly. Has it evolved since a year and a half ago when we yeah had that conversation. I, I will say it has. However, um, they're not listening. I think selfishly. If it were just me or my wife and I, um, I don't know that we would have ever left. And I don't know that we would have ever had a reason to because we're sure. three hours away from all of them. We can be home if and when, whenever we needed to. But we didn't have that proximity convenience to have mm. the consistent relationship with family as, as maybe we would have liked. Family is important. Very, um, very, very important. Selfishly, though, for my own personal network and friends and, and, and social life, but then also for my professional network, and we can dive into the professional side here in a minute. Um, I severed a lot by leaving Columbus. Some of my strongest connections professionally and personally are still here. And when I was out of a job last year due to COVID, when my company shut down, I interviewed for several jobs here in Columbus. And the position I was in then is I'll be down here as often as you need me to be. If you need me to be down here, you know, once a month, twice a month, whatever it is, not knowing how this is going to work out. I know you know who I am and what I can bring to the table. And I know you can help me get a foot in the door someplace and most of my best job leads were from those personal connections, and, and most of those were here. Um, yeah. and you had network. You, you had yeah. built a network. You built a life. Wait, 10 plus years? And 12, 12, yeah. 12, I was, yeah. I was here for, yeah. since 06, yeah. right? So 06 to the end of 17. Um, and so to know that, and then I moved to Detroit where I'm from, and I grew up and went to high school, but I haven't lived there since 2001. Right. You know, so... Um, how old were you in 2001? 18. Yeah, so... Yeah, exactly, right, high school. I, I left... I went home holidays, winters, summers, things like that here and there. But yeah. my network is very minimal, right? Like I have some friends from high school that I'll retain, you know, good rapport with and relationships with. But from a professional network and that that uh, immediate personality screen where you know who the person is, you know where they come from, you know what 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 they're going to bring to the table. I have those in spades here in Columbus by comparison. You know, right? it's, a, it's a big difference because in, in high school, you, you don't necessarily get to choose your friends. Right. It's just proximity who, who kind of lives around the area, stuff like that. So it's kind of the, these are your friends because you play sports with them. You, you're, you know, you live you close choose to be with. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't even have that. You, you don't even have that much of a choice. But as you get older, as you become an adult, you know, you can choose who you want to be friends with in the new city. It's almost like going to college um, where you can choose whoever you want to be. You can decide what groups you want to be around good and point. stuff like that yep and in high school you know i i have very good high school friends you know i got a handful that i still really keep in contact with but um it, when you get older you get to choose and you get to build your own social network as right. you get older and stuff like that and the people that you met in in columbus were people that you wanted to be around you weren't forced to be around exactly and you know the people that you're you're not going to change your friends from where you were from when you were 10 years old those just are people that are part of your lives and they will be part of your lives forever. But would you still be friends? I'm not asking them. I'm just saying, would yep. you still be friends with those people if you met them today? Right. You know, that, that answer, I think for everybody, it's like, well, you know, I got friends that are like, well, he's an asshole, but he, he's my asshole. And I've known him for, you know, <laughs> 20 plus years. And that's just, it is what it is. And I'm, I'm yep. just friends with him for life, no matter what he does. And I'll help him bury a body if I need to. Uh, <laughs> Steve, that goes for you as well. Yeah. I need to get a bigger caddy. Um, <laughs> great great chunk space in the kit not this one no no it's it is good. a little sleeker than yeah, it's yeah. sleek it's, it's I, like the, I like the lexus out there with the with the the wheels That's shannon yeah i like that a lot by the way um <laughs> I, I i think it's sometimes also you talk about the you can choose right spencer i disagree at a certain point and i've i've mentioned this before is that as an adult who are your friends you yep. As a kid, who are your friends? It's it's who you grew up with, who's in the neighborhood, proximity, right? School. Yeah. And, and you School. moved too, right? You're from Chicago and then to- Well, I mean, yeah, we moved here when I was young. So, I mean, it's like, yeah, that was, the, we moved here when I was seven. So- are you still buddies with anybody from Chicago? No. No. Really? I, no. I was seven years old. Seven, yeah, yeah, but those kids, I mean- so we did that for a little while after we moved here as kids, we'd go back and visit family in Chicago. And one of the things we'd do is we'd go back to Lyle, which is a suburb of Chicago. And we'd go see our, our good close friends from where the neighborhood. 
because that's who we were friends with. So it's a proximity thing. Right. Um, I think this is something that what I was kind of looking at with with you can make your certain choices, but and I'm not saying it's it's a negative thing. I like the conversation going on in, in here. You know, Ray and Ian are having a good conversation. Um, I love the comments going back and forth. I think as you get older, as you have kids and everything else, it it, it also sacrifices some of your your things. So you moving up to to Detroit again, right? So you have family. That's a reconnection, right? Correct. It's not necessarily the fairy tale that you thought it would be that everyone's going to like want to like be around all the time because everyone's got their lives. You weren't there, right? right? right so I'm not right. saying that's what you were saying. I'm, I'm and I never that expected way. a parade, but I right. would like to see people more than you know, just as much as I saw them when we lived down here. Right. Right. So, and there's some of those relationships that don't feel very different. I'm 30 minutes away versus three and a half hours away, but I see you just the same. Right. And that well, one of the things feels that you a little do empty. is that as you have kids and, you know, I think, Wilk, you can, you can speak to this is that when you have kids, as they get older, now who are your friends? It's now what neighborhood are you in? Yep. Right. So you're going to see some certain people. Not everyone gets inv like <clears throat> involved with their neighbors anymore. Um, I'm fortunate enough that over the last uh, year, especially last last six months, I've become much closer with the, the two yep. couples across the street. One have a couple boys. One, you know, one just got married in July. Uh, so this is something that, you know, we've now connected as this is the cul-de-sac and yeah, you, you know, built a cul-de-sac. It's, yeah. it's been fantastic. Um, you know, if you move away, if you do things, if you have kids, who, who's, who are the, the other parents at school? Who are the other parents on the baseball know, team or on a baseball yeah, team, yeah, yeah. whatever hobbies the kids are into, because yeah. now that's dominating your life. And, right. and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think that's one of the, the important parts who are your work friends, right? That's right. another thing. Like, who do you hang out with anymore? Yep. You know, this is something that I look at the three of us and we've never worked together. We've, we're friends of friends that have then had a bond that, you know, e these aren't even childhood bonds. Nope. But this is a, a, a phase of our life that I feel fortunate to have that connection with with two other guys. And there were other people in the group that like Chris Dominiak. Yep. He was a, he was a friend of mine. Whoa, he, the dominator. dominator. Thank you. <laughs> so but, you know, I don't talk to him very often. Right. But I mean, when we do talk, it's it's great to catch up. And sometimes it's just literally like, hey, man, like, you know, baseball season starting. I hope the Tigers have a good, good season. You know, also, can I use your ML, MLB at bat? You know, can I use your Netflix password? <laughs> he was a, no. he was a hired gun. Let's just let's just be honest. He was a hired gun, but he was on the team before I was. Yeah. But and, so you were a hired gun as well. Well, I, I miss that game, man. Where's he at these days? L.A. L.A. Jesus. Yeah. But again, life, you know, and he's happy. He's he's now created a life out there. But if he was in the garage and the four of us were hanging out, it would probably be like no time had passed yeah. for better or worse. Yeah. And we'd probably all be around the garage or go to like a like bar Louie or whatever. Sit on my lap, just well, hanging out. And, I, lap, hanging and out. it's it's also a matter of environment. I think you're always going to have those proximity connections regardless of the environment you're in. Right. You're going to have your kids, neighborhood friends and family or friends from school or sports teams or whatever you're involved with. That's almost equivalent to high school, right? You're all in the same position or the same moment together, but you're not necessarily choosing to be with each other. You are with each other because of something else, high school or or school friends or like your kids' friends or your sports friends or whatever it is that you living kind of vicariously through your children. I think the relationships that we built that we're holding on to are personal choices we made to do things together, but then choose to continue to do things together. And that has allowed us to retain that bond of being able to pick back up. I can, I'll never forget the Thanksgiving where you came up with the dominator to the Lions Bears game yeah. to Ford Field. Yeah. And I think you guys ended up at, at Chris's family in Toledo ish area, I believe. Well, we, we, we picked him up there and then on our way back, it was actually uh, Chris and then uh, my buddy Woody who right. came up with us, who's right. a Bears fan. Yep. And we're driving back and it's Thanksgiving and, and we really didn't have much to do. So we ended up at a, uh, a wing a wing joint in the toledo area because they had opened up at like three or four p.m and we were driving back and we're like we need to eat yeah like none of us are at our families for thanksgiving day yeah and you should have stayed we, we could have replayed the that where you look there. like on thanksgiving at a wing place everyone else there was were definitely regulars <laughs> <laughs> so everyone knew each other except for us and so we were we were very welcomed but it's part of the family. <laughs> but I also felt like the same way when you guys were in Detroit and there's a big downtown tailgate culture around mm -hmm. Lions football mm -hmm. that's there? kind of spread throughout there is? downtown. Unfortunately, yeah. Okay. Um, but they it, it was another tight end. Yeah, they need another one. Um, immediately. <laughs> oh, that's a good story. We should tell that story. Um, immediately, you know, as soon as you and, and Chris and your buddy came in, like you had beers in hand, there was food right. on the grill. It was family, right. right? Like it wasn't even yeah. a, a question. 
Um, and, and I think regardless of your environment, it's those connections that you have that are choice connections that you really hold dear. And um, I think that's where the core of this topic comes from is being able to pick right up wherever you left off um, and still be able to talk through things that are surface level, but then also, you know, there's more that you guys don't know about, you know, the past couple of years since I've been at home and especially through COVID that like, I'm excited to share with you, but also excited to like, I haven't really been able to get off my chest beyond like my family network, you know, and I, I've missed those external processing sessions and times to be able to, um, you know, connect with people that are in a similar peer group, similar mindset, and that can really put themselves in another person's shoes and, and help get through some things. Cause I know we've all had moments where we've had some tough conversations to be able to process through and yeah. it's cathartic. There's another one as well. Um, <laughs> it, it really helps recover and drink. heal. Yeah. Drink. Um, it really helps recover and heal and get through some difficult times when you have those connections that aren't your family. Cause a lot of times when you're going through stuff with family, they tell you how you should feel. They tell you what you need to do to recover, but they aren't necessarily listening to you or trying to like get through it. They're more so just trying to, I don't give you their solicited or unsolicited opinion <sighs> and advice, but not necessarily try to help you go through something. It's, it's more of, well, here's what you need to do, or here's how you should feel. I never feel that way with you guys when we're talking about some real stuff um, because you're not one, A, to pass judgment, or B, to impose how you should or shouldn't be feeling in some moment. It's how are you feeling and what can we do to you know, see past it or what does the other side of this look like? Well, I know that I've found myself in situations where this is in all the decades, right? You know what I mean? It's like, especially as an adult, I found myself because of life decisions, it took me down a path that my everyday interactions with people, whether it be at work or in my social life, that because of people that have moved away, or if I had kind of gone a different route or whatever it is, um, I never had him on the podcast, but I know I've mentioned him before, but uh, Big Rob is a good friend of mine. And uh, we were good friends in high school, college and everything else. And when I was going through uh, marriage counseling, I, I, we separated for like three months. I had like, I stayed with him for mm -hmm. like three months. And then he stayed in that house. He's like, you know, 20 minutes away in town. He moved three neighborhoods down. He lives from here? super close yeah. from where we're at right now. We still will text about how we need to get together. Um, and we still will say, you know, how's everything going, all that stuff and small talk. But it's like, he's a guy, kind of guy that, you know, like you guys, is that when I found myself being stressed out and I was just, my life was, I don't want to say spiraling, but it was just one of those things that just, it, it wasn't what I wanted. Yeah. And there are people like you two, there's people, um, and I'm thinking about people I don't hang out with all the time, you know, like yeah. Nate and Dustin and Shan, like these guys I see at least once a week, multiple times a week, a lot of times. How many so podcasts I, do you do a week? One podcast a week. Okay. But so, but I see them more often, but sometimes it's like you have that, like you were saying, Jake, these people in your life that it's a different type of conversation. Yeah, it is. And it's not just the fact they haven't, they haven't really been around you because sometimes you catch up on social media, you kind of know what's going on. But it's this outsider perspective that is more trusted than people that are newer in your life because of whatever the life led you guys together. So like a guy like Big Rob, Spencer, when I went through some shit recently with a breakup, it was one of those situations. And even when I went through that with Big Rob, with my separation and then the divorce and everything else, it's even during that, that time when he found out that, that I had been through a breakup this time, he reached out to me mm -hmm. and it was like we had a, an hour long conversation. And I hadn't really seen, I saw him at my birthday weekend because he was invited as a surprise and it was fantastic, but it was like these connections. And it's like, I don't think that we appreciate those types of connections enough that we, we put those at a, a higher priority in our life Yeah. with the technology that's out there. Yeah. So you can now make those moves and we take it as a passive route sometimes to stay in touch over social media. Kids are growing up and all that stuff, but it's like, you know. I don't follow. I don't think I'm, I'm Facebook friends with and your I'm wife. And I'm not I, even. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't see really much, but you might be a little closer to the family, Spencer, with 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 Jake's family. But it's like I'm guilty of it, and I think this is something that I, I kind of, as we're talking, this this really brings a, a valid point for a lot of people out there is that you can watch the kids grow up through social media. You can also send a text or 
it, anymore you don't just call a lot of times i don't Video think chat. most people do um you you can text and be like hey are you free to talk anytime like mm -hmm. wilk i remember there was a, a over a year ago you were listening to the podcast and you're like hey i've really been enjoying it like how can can i help you or do you want to chat about how we can you know you can make this bigger yep and that was like the like we hadn't really talked much in several months but it's like because you took the time to actually you know reach out yep because there is a a pickup where you left off type of a friendship or relationship with someone that you might think about a family all, all the time like should i you know think about my mom or whatever but do i call her that day maybe not i'll call her tomorrow type thing but it's like are there things there that we can be more active with on trying to keep those connections alive in a more active role in your life and not just letting life take over right it's effort man i mean maintaining friendships maintaining family all that stuff uh i mean i mean it's it's effort <laughs> we have josh bentley from altidus one of our sponsors tony come here it's a live podcast. guard guard dog i, I love it come on pup we come over and say hi to tony so he's not barking at you. <laughs> hey hey easy 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 i think uh I think Nate, can I get you to help clean this up a yeah, little bit or Dustin thing, you, you know, as you, uh, <laughs> as everyone kind of does their own thing and kind of lives their own lives, you know, friendships take, take effort. You know, I'm not friendships among friends, friendships among family, all that stuff. It takes, takes effort to actually have, um, you know, we've done an okay job, you know, not as best as we can, but an okay mm -hmm. job of maintaining friendships. You know, I haven't seen Nate in a few weeks. I haven't seen Shannon, you know, Dustin in a few months, but it, it takes effort to maintain those types of relationships. And hopefully, you know, when you see them every couple of months, you can say hi and kind of catch back up where you're at. You know, one of the advantages of the podcast is cool. The, the lights go out. No, one, one of the advantages of the podcast is, you know, Crane and, you know, when Jake was on, I haven't seen Jake for a little bit was, just to you, you know what people are up to and the second hour of this uh second hour and a half of the podcast is normally kind of really kind of getting to know somebody i feel like i haven't missed that much as far as what's going on in steve's life enough that um you know i haven't had to reach out as much as I, i've wanted to but to know what's going on in people's lives but friendship takes work you know yeah. it takes work and it takes effort and it doesn't have to be every day it doesn't have to be every week it doesn't have to be every month but to maintain the relationships, to pick back up where you are, you right. know, it takes a certain level of planning. Right. You know, everyone has stuff going on and it takes a level of, uh, do I want this person to be in my life? Cause if I don't see, you know, Jake for five years, you know, he's not going to be part of my life. But if I don't see Steve for five years, he's not going to be part of my life. So it's an active part of, if you want to pick back up where you are, you can, but it takes some time to actually figure it out and some true effort to figure it out. Well, and there's only so many things in your life that you're we gonna. Got, we got from here. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks dude. Yeah, there's only so many things in your life that you're gonna. Josh maybe Bentley knows how to make an entrance. More. God, I, get, I get those pants in that color is what I need to do in my life. Jesus Christ. There's uh, there's certain things in your life that you're comfortable with posting on social media, you know, and and living, letting people live kind of all, vicariously. All, through. all the good stuff. Yeah, and then there's other things that like you're comfortable with letting people know over text, just to say, hey, by the way, this happened or this is up. Um, but there's other things that like, for me, if I'm going through something more serious or big, like it better be at least a phone call or I would prefer to talk about it. Thank you. Uh, in person, um, because I think there's just certain things that like, I don't know, aren't as well served or do you really want to broadcast in that type of way? Well, that's the thing um, on, on social media. Like I don't post anything for the most part on social media. Cause I feel like if I post anything positive, I'm, I'm offending people subconsciously. Right. And I was like, here's what's going on good in my life. And I know that like, if you're posting good stuff, there's going to be people that are in my mind, maybe not a lot, but one or two people that are going to be offended, whether it's uh, an ex or a family yeah. member or a friend or something like that, that just knows that, um, wow, why am I not included in that moment of, of your happiness? It's, it's a weird thing. Like to I had to cook out on Sunday. I don't want to go into it, but if you'd like to <laughs> pick it back right where we left up, um, so instead of gentlemen's dinners, uh, what Steve is doing is just inviting very close friends and family, you know, 50 of them 
uh, <laughs> the things like that. Thanks, but thanks for the input. It, it's just, it was less than a hundred people. It's just a weird. <laughs> My closest friends. It's a weird dynamic to <laughs> you. You hope it. that the people that you want are are all rooting for you, right? Yeah. But there, there's a segment where there's consciously or subconsciously, there's people, your close friends that just might not be rooting for you. Just because whatever they're going on in their life, they're basically looking at it to say, is is what's going on in his or her life better than what's going on in my life? And that, that's a that's just why I kind of stay away from it because I know there's just a, a reason why people you don't go on there on social media and feel better about yourself because you look at everyone's life that uh, you're, you're comparing, and yeah. you know if you're com- doing comparisons all the time, that's just not going to make you happy. Yeah. Well, I think we're at a point of the conversation where I think we should pick right up with a few things because i i for uh, personally yeah we, we gotta wrap it up we gotta wrap our time yeah no, no hang on before we i'm <laughs> yeah. sorry I, yeah I, please do. now the the yeah a live broadcast of, trip uh, trip the fuse thank you very much josh appreciate like it i said josh bentley knows how to make an entrance he also handed off uh what are these monte cristo series c never heard of it i have no idea what it is <laughs> it's old it's organic <laughs> it's it's, <laughs> it's, it's plant-based <laughs> oh don't, yeah. don't even open up the yeah. romeo <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm going to smoke this. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, no, but I was going to say, why Why are people... So I'll use me as an example. And I actually had people reach out to me uh, after I went through the more recent breakup. So I, I... And we've talked about it on the podcast that I use social media almost as a more honest thing. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And not everyone does that. And sometimes, you know, it, you don't <laughs> post all the bad things, but... You know, there was a time there back in uh, December and, and uh, January, February, stuff like that, where I was kind of working through some some things. And it wasn't like a sob story in a sense. I used it as a more uh, I was trying to pick myself up. So I was mm. putting out some more, um, I don't know, with, between the podcast and stuff we talk about in part two and, and some of the, the people that I have that follow me and then also the community page is that. I was putting out a lot of more positive type of things and talking about loving unconditionally and stuff that people don't normally see unless it's like a social media influencer. And it wasn't to get followers. It was right. like, but I had people like I had a guy um, that just came into the shop. I haven't seen in a long time. And it was like a, a guy that I used to see out and about at some of the bars around town and stuff like that. Capes. Uh, it wasn't Capes. It was Ryan Atkins. I don't know if he's, he's listening tonight or if he listens um, every week, but he listens sometimes. Saw him at the gym and and he was he came up to me. It was like weeks or a month after I had started doing like the the old man walks. Mm-hmm. And I was I was posting some some messages with that. And it wasn't necessarily I wasn't like saying, oh, you know, woe is me and all that stuff. It was more the importance of some some things in, in your life and stuff like that. And he he told me, he's like, dude, I really appreciate your your openness. Yeah. Do you do you care? And he, he said, he's like, because I, I've struggled with that stuff too, and I would never have the he said like i don't i wouldn't have the balls and it wasn't like a negative thing he's like yeah. i saw that and it, i was like that was really good to to read I, 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 and, and he started following like every fucking story that i i posted do you get any satisfaction one way or another if 20 people see your story or 100 people see your story i don't um i do i'm i'm fascinated with it a little bit so like when i was out at my uh my dad's uh um uh, i saw cemetery I- on so I went out and, and I um, it was the the four year anniversary of when he passed and posting that. I remember the first year I did it, the second year I did it. I go out there for like a birthday or whatever it was. And um, it was more like not everyone that's lost someone thinks about that. And so once again, this year, this was uh, what uh, what's the date? So it was two days ago. Two days ago, I went out there and I posted a couple of pictures and, and, and Instagram stories and and it was about, you know, loving people in your life and, and just what's important in life. And, and you know, I shed a, a couple of tears, you know, on my own. I went out there by myself and all in all, it was a very good couple of days off, but I, I made time to go out there. And then all of a sudden, I last I looked, it was like almost 150 to 200 likes on Facebook and a lot of like positive mm-hmm. cheers, well said, all this stuff. And it shows me that with everything else we're inundated with through social media, like what you might have been talking about when I was trying to get the electric back on, um, it, it was the fact that it, it it's nice to see stuff like that. And I don't think that the vast majority of people are like, oh, Steve, you know, like you're having a rough day or whatever. No, it was like, you're absolutely right. 
I haven't lost anyone or I lost, I went into a uh, Fado to order lunch on um, Tuesday and I had how, a guy. How were there. the chicken breasts? Well, I had fish tacos that day, but they were very good. Okay. But I had a guy in there, uh, Bill, who I, I he were Facebook friends. I've known him just like in passing, like we're not super close or anything like that. But he, uh, while I was sitting there uh, waiting for my food, he says, uh, so I lost my dad uh, uh, two weeks ago. Oh, shit. And he's like, I want to reach out, but I, I just want to say thanks. That's awesome. Yeah. Those are the types of things that if you, again, put yourself out there a little bit. It, so it, the it, reward is is worth kind of putting yourself out there, I guess, is what you're saying. It's not just for me. It's it's the fact that it's like you have people that you're close with that may reach out to you or or you have people that may not be as close, but you might mean more to them than Thanks. that you might realize that that you know that they mean to you. And so I think that we have these tools and everything else that can make it uh, a closer connection. Yeah, I, I lost my transition in I'm my sorry. head. No, no, no. I think that was all really great, Steve. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, I think for me, it's it's humbling in certain ways to to go through whether it's a loss or whether it's it's um, relationships or or in my case a, a job loss. Um, the place I was working at when I lost my job, I didn't never thought I was going to retire from there, but I also didn't expect the business to tank and then us to not be right. in, you know employed anymore. Um, it's a humbling experience to then have to open yourself up to your network and say, Hey, right. I'm help, out of work help, help. here. Here's the consequence or here's what happened. I'm not a piece of shit, but you know, basically our business went under due to COVID because we sold things on Amazon and all of our inventory was unfulfillable, um, after like April because Amazon fulfillment centers was only accepting soaps, PPE and certain things at a, for a period of time when COVID was spiking and all of our stuff that we sold was not deemed essential. So our revenue went from, you know, several hundred thousand dollars a day to nothing because we couldn't replenish inventory. And so everybody had to go. Right. And so to try to job search through the pandemic, now, mind you, the aid that was available, the, the extra unemployment, things like that, like it was good. But I spent, helped, my, yeah. I spent my birthday last year apply, applying for unemployment benefits. And um, it's a humbling experience. It's also humbling to have to reach out to people that you see yourself as peers of or... Um, in a professional network that you might not keep up with all the time, but you know could vouch for you in an interview process to say, hey, here's where I'm at. And you really get a good picture of who your true friends are and acquaintances are in those moments of the people that really have your back and that are actively trying to help you versus the ones that aren't really trying to pick back up because of whatever. You got other stuff going yeah, on. exactly right. Exactly right. And so it's it's a humbling but also rewarding experience because – I felt really rewarded by the people that actually took a vested interest in trying to help me get land landing on my feet. I ended up finding the job I landed in on my own due to professional connections that I had had uh, built over the past few years. But um, I, I know that that's a really humbling and, and challenging experience, especially when you have to open yourself up to more vulnerable situations and you need something out of it, right? Like I needed a job. I had two miles to feed. I had a mortgage to pay for. I had right. a lot of risk. Three. Yeah. Four. I was just calling the kids really, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gotta eat. Um, so yeah, so I, I think that's, that's the other piece of it. And that's why certain people are more comfortable being, I would call it vulnerable, um, and humble in those moments. Whereas others, you know, sometimes are a bit more guarded and, and don't know how to like your buddy, you know, wasn't sure how to open themselves up to that. Right. And, and so, I don't know, I think it's an interesting social experiment, but then also, you know, when you go through some stuff, um, you really get to find out who your true people are. Um, and the ones that are really vested in trying to help you. So Jake, you had mentioned like, this is kind of your first weekend out in, in a what year and a half. Yeah. Like since yeah. Post COVID really like the last fun thing I did pre COVID, I did two things. I, I was in Scottsdale, Arizona with a buddy of ours that we're about to see tomorrow. Um, and we did a nice little golf trip two months before our company shut down, spending more money than I probably should have going into six months of unemployment. Um, and then after that, we visited some family in North Carolina so we could see like our kids and their kids kind of interact and kind of grow together a little bit more, their cousins, um, and my wife's family. And so, um, yeah, so really first time since like March of last year that we'd really done anything for ourselves to be out and about and in these types of settings. Yeah. And see, you had mentioned that, um, that is the box back open and running and cigars inside and things like that. It is. Yeah. So we kind of talked about it 
three podcasts, there was that magical switch that was flipped. Yeah, I yeah. mean that was nice of the Tinderbox to do that. Yeah, no, we were we were behind it. So have you noticed that the the cigar shop and you guys were you know had stricter rules just because of the location? Have you noticed that it's back to what it was? Or have you noticed that hey, it's it's still I don't want to say hesitancy, but or or have things picked back up to right back where they were? So I think, you know, what was that? Yeah, I was gonna say so. We also saw this happen back in, uh, I think it was early May here in Columbus, Ohio. We had um, a nice stint of really warm weather. Yep. And the the high-end retail area that Tinderbox is at is is called Easton, and it was packed. That's beautiful. And there was still a mask mandate. There was still a mask mandate. There was still all the, the social distancing and everything else. However, people are ready to get out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, People have been ready to get out. It's just they've been ready to get out, and it was there's a lot of confusion there on on what was happening, numbers and all that stuff. But um, it, yeah, it's it's very well. I'm trying to choose my words here, um, I don't want to say orchestrated, but I want to say orchestrated. But it's um, as soon as the the CDC came out with what they they said, and the state of Ohio, the day before the governor said that we're going to do it on June 2nd. And the CDC came out the next day and said that what they recommend. And then the governor of Ohio came back on, we're going to say, okay, we're going to go with them immediately retroactive this date, but also then the, the public health department of Ohio was a day later. Mm -hmm. And then where we are in, in Columbus, Ohio, um, the city council and the mayor here, they took executive action a year ago, but then it was the, the, the mayor asked the city council to um, review it. And then they said initially that, well, it's because Franklin County is a level three on the made up map that we made. Um, and then Franklin County Department of Health came out after that and said, we're going to rescind it and go after the CDC. And then Memorial Day happened. So the city council didn't meet because it's not convenient. So to my <laughs> point, oh, yeah. as it, is it like where it was pre March? Yes. Where I'm getting with this is, yes. is that absolutely is that it's as if the magical switch has been flipped and nothing happened. Okay. And so there, the same there vibe in the cigar people. shop and things like that. No, it's people coming in with maybe a mask and then they take it off, realize they don't have to wear it. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, yes, it's, it's back to where it do was you, do you appreciate, immediately. Do you appreciate it more or less the same or frustrated that it took this long to kind of get there? Me, yep. Personally, yes. No, I'm very frustrated. Yeah. Okay. That it obviously took money out of everyone's pocket and your particular industry. Well, I, I don't know what the the sales at the cigar shop are. So the, the topic of of picking right up, it, it absolutely did that. And now there's going to be a rolling side of it. Is that uh, so? Our neighbor where I eat all the time is uh, Chipotle, and Chipotle. How is do you on, pronounce it? Chipotle is on the news today that they have raised their prices, and do you know why? Because guac is extra. No. Because they're going to start hiring people and paying everyone fifteen dollars an hour, and so everything else with that, you know, as far as that goes, is that it's it, it, and it's tough not to go down the rabbit hole. But now you're going to see the the in a sense a backlash of people like, oh, good, they're making fifteen dollars an hour, and then it's like, well, if prices or go up the, enough, the, then the Uber ride was thirty down. bucks, now it's forty bucks. McDonald's two days ago was on the news, uh, local and nationally, that they are are working adamantly on making everything automated so they don't have to hire people in at the higher rate so they can keep the prices down. Mm -hmm. These I, are things that, you know, picking right back up where you left off, you go to this, if we're going on this side of the the coin here, is that you can't just do that in, in life. Because, I, I, yeah. I, what, what, no, no, you're, you're, you're good, man. In, in my world, so I'm in manufacturing and if stuff, you know, cabinets and stuff like that, if you used to take four weeks, it takes some 18 weeks now. Mm -hmm. So I think there's just a, a pent up demand for everything right now. I think just prices in general are just going to boom. I don't know if it's happening this year. I don't know if a $10 cigar costs $12 now. You know, No, the cigar industry right now, at this moment, this snapshot of time, it's the fact that you cannot get a lot of the product because of the supply chain 
in our industry, just like a lot of industries, like you're mentioning, you know, cabinets and everything else, anything with wood, right. you know, skyrocketing in price, let alone you're not going to get it now for six months. Yeah. If a, if a house costs 400,000, you're building the same exact house for 500 now, just because everything in that house has, has gone up in price. And the people, yeah. And, and if you do that now, then obviously in a year or two, if you try to resell the house, if everything levels back out, then you're going to lose your, your ass on it. Right? I think there's, there's a pent up man, but I also think that there, there's a joy to it, right? You know, yeah. the fact that, you know, we get to see Jake, you know, we get to, you know, be around each other, you know, that social aspect that, that we missed. Hopefully people just don't go back. You know, we're at uh, McKellen's on uh, on Friday after the tournament and talked to to Amy over there. He's been on the podcast a couple of times and like, how's it going? It's like, well, you know, we're, it's tough to find bartenders, tough to find service, but also the, the customers are still assholes <laughs> just because they people don't know how to uh, interact at a restaurant, at a bar anymore because, they either think that they uh, are entitled to being there or because they, they missed that year and a half of yeah. going to bars and restaurants. So they think that, you know, they're doing that bar or restaurant a favor by being there. Right. So we're, there was we're, a point where they were trying to support the restaurant by going were, out there. There was a point there, but I think it's the people that, and probably same exact thing for the cigar shop that the people that were there for the past year, um, that were supporting it. Now you're probably getting some different types of people in there. Maybe, maybe not. But it's it's tough to pick back up exactly where we were. But I think people are adjusting really well to shit. We haven't we most people I, there's there's two types of worlds, right? There's people like Jake and his family have been in his house for a year and a half. And there's people like uh, like you who have been in the world for a year and a half and life hasn't their job role has changed, but they're still in the world every day. So I think we're doing as best as we can to get back out there and to try to act like it's, it's we talked normal. About, we talked but, about keeping some of the best best practices. The, 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 the phrase I'll use, and this actually is, I think, very relevant to personal relationships as, as well, is we get people coming in to, to the cigar shop. Um, I, I've heard that from people in the, the service industry in general. Glad you guys are, you made it. Yeah, like almost like, surprised, right? Yeah. And you, you kind of want to say, no thanks to you <laughs> because where were you at? Right. I'm, well, I was, cool. I'm I mean, sorry, I, 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 no, yeah, it's good to see you. We, we made it, you know, it was a struggle, but you know, I'm happy you finally came back out and I know it's not anyone's fault because that's what they, they believe. And that's what they, they you know, how they, they went through it all. Um, but there's going to be people at, at Chipotle or, or your, your clients would be like, why the fuck is this so expensive? It's like, really, do you, do you really, you don't understand what happened? Yeah, this is the backlash. This is what that the diversity that was put on a lot of the industries in the in the world in general, that I'll say this on the personal thing is that I haven't talked to say a friend like Wilk in a long time. And I'll say that I, I would identify with the fact that I feel guilty because it's like, I kind of knew he had a new job and all that stuff. But did I reach out and say, Hey, how's everything going enough? No. And so it's like I can talk to him tonight coming over here to the podcast a friend that i've known for a long time we've been very close over the years and we have that whole pick up where you left off type thing but if your first thing is to be like so did you ever find a new job like how, how's the family you still married like that i didn't say that stuff oh, it was just like let, yeah, let, let, <laughs> less, less attitude would help with that. no but i'm saying like it, it would that's the the fault of, I think, a lot of people is that you let some of these other priorities you take, let the relationships go take because, a yeah. hold of your life. And then when things calm down a little bit, you're like, I haven't talked to you in like a year. Like, yeah. how's everything going? Shit. <laughs> like, really yeah. bad. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for reaching out. <laughs> Why didn't you reach out? Because things were going shit. Yeah. Like that's yeah. I mean, there's only so much suck that can be piled on, you know, simultaneously because everybody's going to be right. going through shit in shitty circumstances, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's just a matter of, um, I don't know. I, I, I don't feel any any guilt or resentment from that perspective. I think I think where I'm I'm at is, um, my yearning of of wanting to see you guys is not just to selfishly bring you the bourbon and come down and be on the, on the podcast, but um, I'm an I'm an external processor and I thrive on on being around other like-minded, similar people in terms of peer group and mentality and approach to life. And I haven't had that for 16 months. Like right. I, I, I have worked remotely since October or been in my house working six feet from where I sleep every night and not interacting with the world. My wife and I went to a restaurant for the first time, I don't know, a month or so ago on a patio. 
And like, I straight up. How like, was Chili's? It was delicious. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Sizzling fajitas for days. Mm. Um, anyway. Uh, Endless boneless. Yeah. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, I didn't know, like, I didn't know what to do with my hands. I didn't know how to act. <laughs> like, I was interacting with the waitress. Like, I, I was just, yeah. It was so weird, but hey, girl, you up? There was clearly a first date <laughs> happening from like me to Dustin, and I couldn't stop looking because you could tell that dude wasn't trying at all, but the, the lady was really, really trying, and she ordered a bourbon neat, uh, sipping it out of a plastic glass, yes, uh, or cup keeper. Um, and I was like, wow, that she's I like she's, her already. She's really, really trying, but you could tell she had her hair done. She, she does a lot of first dates. A new shirt. Maybe she likes whiskey. Um, but yeah, it was it was just really interesting for me to like try to pick up my new sense sense behaviors yeah Yeah. and then literally for a good half an hour i talked told my wife like i legitimately don't know how to act right now like i don't know where to look (laughs) i don't know what like i was i was bantering with the waitress more than i probably should have and it was just an interesting mental kind of (laughs) funk that i found myself in after how big of a tip did you leave it was i feel like it was handsome just the, um no it was about it was a good 25 percent. yeah think, there, that's yeah, yeah. 14 and a half if i've ever heard yeah. <laughs> so i think i think it's well i think this backlash that you alluded to spence is it, socially i think people are going to have some interesting moments of of picking back up you see it in sports right now i mean people acting crazy at games yeah, and stuff like absolutely. that absolutely or, or just like watching the memorial last weekend or watching the the, the tournament at keel with a pga where phil won and people were just going freaking nuts and and at that moment, I'm like, wow, people feel really comfortable to be, you know, shoulder to shoulder with thousands of people simultaneously all of a sudden. It's it's, it's weird. You know, yeah. I, you know, Steve likes to say it's a, a magical switch. You I know, like to say it. Yeah, you said it. You said it enough times. So I say you like to say it. But it's, Am I wrong? Yeah, you're not wrong. But <laughs> but there there is a, you know, there's like a cloak of, of invisibility or a cloak of uh, invincibility. invincibility, excuse yeah, me, yeah, yeah. Uh, that all of a sudden was like, you know, not to go down the vaccine rabbit hole, but the people that, you know, wanted it, got it. And the people that didn't want it are okay that they didn't get it. Right. So there's just this weird feeling that, Hey, you know, we're, we're back to, it's not the new normal. It's just, th- this is, this is normal again. Yeah. And I think that's something that you, you, you touched on. Nate, you want to say something? I assume. Yeah, I think there's something that um, <clears throat> I've seen a couple people, uh, a couple people in the cigar industry have, have commented very well on it. Just like I'm sure any industry, but that's part of the people I follow. Um, is that do you want the the new normal or we're back to normal or whatever you're comparing it to like 2020? It's like if 2020 hadn't happened, you know what I'm talking about, Herklotz. Herklotz. So Michael Herklotz, he's been on the podcast. He was with Nat Sherman. Now they have uh, taken over. Um, Nat Sherman had closed down in New York. Completely shut down. Really? Uh, yeah. So that's Damn. the whole news. But he commented, he's like, if 2020 had never happened. Time. Would you want to go back to 2019 or would you want to like make progress? Mm. Have, we, so have we you, made progress? Well, so like even like in our business, we've looked at it. It's like you don't look at like, hey, you guys, you know, doing better. Like we're not even looking at 2020, especially, but we're not even looking at 2019. We're looking at 2018. We're looking at 2017. Yeah. We're looking at things back again where even in your personal life, do you want to get back to was 2019 that great? Maybe it was for you. But like, or do we just take it for granted? Or do you just say like, well, that's back to normal. And if 2020 hadn't happened and 2019 had just rolled into 2020 and things had been normal, would you have wanted things to be better? There is a sense of, I think, complacency that now that the crisis is over, I could take a deep breath and just relax again. Would you have done anything different in 2019 if you knew 2020 was coming? Um, no, or was it just like, Hey, here's 2019. No, I don't, this I don't this is how I, life is. I don't think I would have. Are you, or would you do anything in 2021 now that you know 2020 has happened? Or is it just like, Hey, let's just kind of go back because we, I would we took have done, I'll answer this per, personally and professionally. I would have done 20, well, probably for me, mo- mostly personally, I would have handled 2020 uh, differently if the two week shutdown was going to last 10 months. Hmm. I think a lot of people in a lot of their different arenas of their life probably would have done things a little differently um, because it was so unknown. And at first it was a two week vacation where like, oh, this is not bad. I got a little time off. I can go fucking, you know, hang out, you know, take a couple more walks and all that stuff. This will be two weeks. It's that 
or, or a weekend at the time. Yeah, I still have my vacation time. I'm not burning any vacation time, so I might as well just like enjoy it. I can't travel anywhere, but like, like yeah, let's just get drunk at home. Like, you don't have to be out at the office tomorrow. But when you realize what the aftermath yeah. from that came, and and everyone, like Wilk saying, he's showing up at a restaurant and doesn't know what to fucking do. I don't think he's. That's a, that's like that's someone right, that was a hermit. I think that's fifty yeah. percent though. Yeah, because there's people that's kept living their lives, and Absolutely. and good for them, right? I I didn't because I had pretty immune compromised people in my bubble that I right. wanted. There's no to, right you know, way to like, do it, right? There's no right way to do it. I just was choosing not to expose ourselves because I didn't want my dad to get COVID and die, Absolutely. like straight up, right? And so I think the backlash to your second part is going to be people are going to choose to do things differently this year to pick right up or to, to pick up off of missed time or lost time from last. So they feel like they lost something. So the backlash behavior you're going to see now, I predict will be take it up to 11 to try to catch up on all the things like that they travel, missed. travel Some industry, might. all of those things I think will, will bounce Nate, back go in ahead. different ways. Yeah, go ahead. Nate. So I was, I was going to ask a question, but since you brought up Michael Herklotz, uh, Josh brought up what he had posted and wanted me to actually read it. Yeah, go ahead. So he said, I hear people say, quote, we need to get back to the way things were, back to normal, end quote. But imagine if there was no pandemic, would we be saying to each other, I can't wait to try to get things back to the way they were in 2019? Of course not. And frankly, we should not be saying that now. The past is the past. Pandemic or not, we only go one direction, forward. We experience, we learn, we adjust and adapt. We think differently, we pivot, we do the best we can with what we've got. And we do everything we can to make sure that as we do move forward, we try to make sure things are better for those who come next. I think that's incredibly insightful. I just think that most people are very short-sighted. Yeah. And I, I don't say most, I would say the majority of people are just short-sighted. And what, what can I do tomorrow? What can I do in the next few weeks versus how can I make? I don't think most people think, hey, what can I do in, for 2025 to be the best year yet? Um Personally, I mean, you know, might be might be off on that, but that's just kind of what I think. I think most people are just short sighted. How can I get through the next week? But at the same time, I think there's a segment of the population that acts very in a reactionary way, right? There, there's that made up for lost time. There's there's the the people that you know feel like they they want to do something differently rather than being that forward thinking mindset. I think the people that are focused forward are are successful, right? Are are the ones that are going to be able to move through things that are challenging in a more either quick or even sometimes graceful way, because they're not going to dwell on the past of what might've held them back. They're going to be able to compartmentalize or, that. Or since forward. new opportunities, here's the new opportunities that right. arise. Yeah. So how do you translate that though, to your, your everyday life with, with relationships, with your job and everything else? Like if we're going to learn anything from this, like what we're talking about with 2020 versus 2019, 2021, all that stuff is that, you know, we have an opportunity that we don't have to have things out of our control, always just take control of it. Yeah, yeah I, I think, you know, Jake, Jake was put in a tough situation. Steve was put in a tough situation. You know, I, I was put in a tough situation. It's just, I think you also realize you want to be in a bunker with um, during this. It was, um, who are the people that I want to be in a bunker with? And, you know, it's kind of only the strong survive. So if you're able to survive through it, you know, with people, then it was definitely worth surviving with them. And hopefully you came out much stronger, but I do think it, it broke some people and maybe, you know, there's going to be something else that hits the fan. You yeah. know, some, some has always come up. I mean, this was an, an obviously an anomaly that none of us ever deal with, dealt with, but there's going to be some shit that's going to happen here. Um, that's going to prove who you want to surround yourself with mm -hmm. and what friends, what family and who is there for you and who you want to ride the next, not pandemic with, but who you want to ride the next wave with. So I have an interesting question. Have any of you have family members that live through the Great Depression? Uh, I got a 98 year old and a 95 year old. And do they still have certain let's call them depression behaviors, great depression behaviors, meaning yeah, they're they, they they're, do certain they're, things a certain way because of. Yeah. They're worried at all, they, all yeah. at all times, no matter how much money they've accumulated, they're worried right. that they're constantly going to run out of that money. And they, they always have that in the back of their head. So, I don't, I don't know how that's com how, what the comparison is to this, because I don't know if we're going to view, Hey shit, if 2022, there's another COVID situation, sure. how we're going to do it. But yeah, go ahead. I'm just curious to see what are those, ingrained behaviors that people still do post 10 years, 20 years post this, 
if there is anything. I think there still will be. I can't identify what they're going to be. What do you be. think they're going to be? I don't know. Like, I've for example, opinion, like a silly it. thing. Like my wife's my wife's grandmother, you know, will save every container that anything ever comes from, comes in. Cottage cheese, sour cream, something, so that she can wash it out and then give it to someone else, right? But that stems from scarcity or not having enough or wanting to give something to someone else that doesn't have something and say, hey, here, take this. I just made soup or whatever whatever it is, right? And, and so I, I identify that as someone who's lived through some tougher times where people didn't have enough of what they needed, whether it was food or money or whatever it was. And there was there's behaviors ingrained in your everyday actions that seep into generations. My wife still does it. I'm like, why do we have 10 sour cream containers? Not that we eat that much sour it's cream. A, but it's like, a fair question to ask her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. Um, we can recycle these, right? Like there's the thing. Put but, leftovers in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, we don't, and especially through 2020, like we don't see anyone. Like we're eating the leftovers. We have Pyrex in the thing. Like we can, you know, whatever. Yeah, before Pyrex though, like I remember like Cool Whip. I don't remember eating that much Cool Whip, but cool like every Cool Whip, Cool Whip, Cool Whip, Cool Whip. Cool whip. Yeah. But I'm just saying like we had a lot of Cool Whip containers and I don't remember eating that much Cool Whip except for on like Thanksgiving. <laughs> you nailed that last one. That <laughs> Thank was you. But I'm just saying, like, voice but, it. Just, but it was right here. But I gotta say, I'm, like, I'm when, yeah. <laughs> but when there was leftovers, somehow there was like marker on uh -huh. a Cool Whip container. Yeah. We're yeah. still doing the Cool Whip. You, you thing. still you are. <laughs> <laughs> but the same thing. So I would love to know what our like kind of innate subconscious behaviors will be there's, so, and there's so, going to be some people that do them and others that don't so just like depression right behaviors. so you know i've been seeing people since you know we took basically march off but i've been i'm in sales i yep. basically started seeing people again in april yep but in april you know it's masks it's six feet apart sometimes there's literally physical plastic between us and stuff like that you're going to basically meet your company for the first time next, next week. week Yep. okay so are you going to shake everyone's hand open mouth kiss yeah. <laughs> well, that is something you picked up it's from 2019. Family, it's a family yeah. business that yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But it's just a, you know, I've, I picked right back up and it's just innate yeah. in me to touch and feel, you know, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to say, how are you? It's just, it's, it's. They bow. Yeah. All right. Some people need I mean, to bow. I bowed before this. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, it's an interesting thing because in, let's see, June, I want to say a year ago, I went on an interview that I thought I had the job. I didn't want the job, but I would have taken it because it was paying well and yeah. I was qualified. Yeah. I thought I had the job. Detroit Lions head football coach. <laughs> we will bite all of your kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I go to this job interview and mind you, this is the first time I've been face to face in person with anyone. Uh, the recruiter that, that brought me onto the onsite interview with the CEO said, no masks. These guys are insurance. They, you know, they, they, they're acting like nothing's going on. So just in mind you last summer, if you look at the numbers, wasn't really that bad. Like th there wasn't a lot of cases per day. It was prospectively compared to some of the waves we had over the fall. And even like, I have a lot of my employees that I supervise now that are in India that they're seeing 300, 400,000 right. cases. They're still going through it. Right. And I'm, I'm very much aware of what they're going through every day. Um, but, but that first handshake and that moment where I'm like, oh man, like we're, three feet apart and I just shook your hand and we're not wearing masks. And I have a little mask in my portfolio with my it's unprotected age. sex at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. And in that, in like yeah. you're, uh, you're three months, you're literally, three, that's how I felt. Dude. You're three months into that, that, that pandemic of I like, COVID I need a job. Like <laughs> it's easier. Yeah. But there's people that like, for example, I just told you guys no in the comment. house before the podcast that like, I'm in a golf league. I only know like two of the guys in the golf league, but like I sit next to my neighbor who I I'm a partner with in the golf league and we ride together. We die together. Bad boys for life. Um, Great movie. you're welcome. Yeah. Um, but I'm comfortable being around him cause we've been around each other. Right. But the guys that I've never seen before, I give them a fist pound instead of a handshake at the 18th green, you know, like it's just a little, I don't know. It's a mental thing. It's a mental thing. Right. And, and I don't know why that is or how long that's going to stick with us, but I'm curious to see if there's something more or less superficial than that, that people still do beyond this. And, and that's, I I, I personally am, I guess, more of an optimist. I think it's just going to go right back to where, where it was and everyone's going to be hugging and kissing and all that stuff. But I think that the people, you know, my, my parents, you know, both of them are vaccinated and all that stuff. And my mom still is concerned about going to a restaurant mm -hmm. and she's concerned that like, I want high ceilings and stuff like that, vaccinate stuff like that. It's just, I think for some people that are really take it that, Hey, if I touch this table, I could die. Or if I touch that Amazon package, um, that it could have some serious consequences, whether it can or it can't. I think those people, it's going to be a little bit uh, 
quick returns. I'm glad that we did at, at our age versus at, at an older state, I guess is kind of where I'm at. No, I'm more worried about the kids actually that, that went through this. Worried about the kids? Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. Like my 10 year old nephew, like he, he's, he's freaked out still. Yeah. Yeah, my, this is not, yeah, it was not yeah, the mental health issues. So we, we, so living through COVID with two little kids, um, my, we made the decision back in the fall. We had to commit to the school year that my son would stay either virtual all year or for kindergarten or um, return to in-person when the district deemed that it was appropriate to do so. And we didn't like that lack of control. Um, and so we chose him to back in, I don't know what it was, November of the school year. We chose to keep them virtual all year just because we thought that that was the right decision at the time. We wanted to see my dad. We wanted to see other people. Um, so we, we chose to keep them home. Um, in April, um, mind you, we had been working from home, living, never leaving our house. Our four-year-old was acting out temper tantrums, just psychologically not great. You could tell just the way he interacted, the, how he reacted to change. One of us leaving, like I literally had to say goodbye to him for 30 minutes before I ran to the grocery store to do a, a Kroger pickup or whatever it might've been in the moment. Um, and so we knew that that was, it was having a toll on him that's your bad. mentally and psychologically, or that's the same thing, um, bourbon. Um, and so we made, we made the conscious decision to send him to preschool two days a week, exposing him to 14 other students or 12 other students. But we knew for him and his development that it was the right decision. His last day of preschool was today. Um, but we're so glad we did it because now he's back to himself again. Like I can leave the house without that fear of separation anxiety. Four years old, the first thing he told me on his first day of preschool, he said, what about the coronavirus, dad? Yeah. I don't want to get the virus. Yep. I don't want to get four years old. I don't want to get sick. I, I, I was baffled, like how astute he was in the moment. And we said, you know what? It's safer now. Your grandparents are vaccinated. Vaccinated. Um, we're not as worried about people that we care about getting sick. And I said, the good thing is, buddy, it doesn't affect kids as bad as it affects older people. And and I was trying to speak to him like an adult, you know, and, and he's four. Um, and he took that and he tr obviously implicitly trusts his parents as they should. But at the same time, um, it's just interesting to see how people that aren't adults that are living through this with us and feeling the stress via the people they're around, how astute they were in the situation is, wait, I don't want to be around other people. And it almost broke my heart, you know, yeah. that, that a four-year-old could be that aware. How, how, how could it not, man? Right. And and um, and um now to see him today and how sad he was that today was his last day of preschool because he's going to miss his friends. He's going to miss his teachers. I, I wanted that for him. And and mind you, it felt like a mild risk. But at that point, we were already scheduled for vax number one. My wife and I, our parents were already all completely vaccinated at that point up in Michigan. So we felt comfortable taking that calculated risk, knowing that we wanted the betterment of our son. And for me, I cannot wait for them. The house we're moving to this summer, um, they both get to go to the same school starting in the fall. My first grader and then my four-year-old preschooler get to start to go to the same school together and build a normal childhood with those normal experiences that you would want them to have versus trying to raise a virtual kindergartner to focus on learning how to write and up. read and do all those things and, and not having that social interaction and the ability to be fun and to play and to be around their peers. I feel bad for them, but at the same time, like, how do you, I don't know. And my young son couldn't pick right up when we said, okay, it's time to go to school. He said, no, no, I don't want to. Um, and, and I don't blame him to be honest, you know? And so it, it's an interesting dynamic of, like you said, Steve, I wonder how those kids are going to feel or act. Um, well, I think, so let's, Take it off of the COVID thing. For yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, year. we've been That's talking me. a lot about it. Yeah, I can talk about it all day long and probably uh, upset a lot of people. But I, I think that... Go, what? I was just like 50% of people. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are we teaching our kids when we let like our, our own like career paths and everything else take us to that, that level we were talking about? You go full circle, right? So it's something that where you make these choices for a career or whatever else, and they look at it as like, yeah, you can actually just completely leave everything that's important to you remember as a kid did anyone move away as a kid yeah, yeah. and it's just like you had to leave all your friends yeah. but, but we didn't have i didn't have a choice you didn't have a choice right did you have a choice in 2020 no exactly my point so my point but you is just fucking roll with it you're just like this is what's being told and this is what no, you you're, do. you're actually no but you're actually training you're, you're teaching children that this is okay leave everything important to you because you think that you might make a couple more bucks yeah 
Is that okay? Well, in a capitalist society, absolutely. Some and people, I, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. saying there's no right answer. I'm not, I'm not yeah. like trying to prove a point. Right. But I'm saying the only point that I'm maybe trying to prove is that this is a we're breeding all of this. Yeah. And and COVID and everything else, like the way that we handled this, absolutely. I think it's been something that we're trying for not just a year. Do you think that there's something in society that hey, we're training them for years to come on this? Or do you think it's like here? Here's just a one-off year that ten years from now, yeah, that this sucks. Is have damaging effects. This is gonna have damaging effects. We saw it already when you talk about the 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 trends or whatever. It's like what happened in 2020. We we stockpiled toilet paper because there was some <laughs> fucking rumor that we're gonna have a toilet paper shortage. Or, or gas recently. That was my point. Right. Fast forward a year later, North Carolina has no gas because people are filling up trash bags, not even like real containers, trash bags. That's all. There's a peanut butter shor shortage because that was on the news one day. Sorry about that. I don't care about that. But it's like these types of things. I, it's do you, did you guys stock stock up on toilet paper? I refuse to answer that question based on your tone. <laughs> I'm bought, I, I bought what I, I was actually I knew it was short or whatever. We had plenty of it. But I remember I was driving. My folks did. I know that. I was driving by the to the post office because I was still out shipping shit, and and all of a sudden I was like, oh, there's CVS. I'll just pop in there. There's a four pack, and I knew that uh, my ex's uh, mom and stepdad were were saying that they were having problems finding out where they were. So you snagged it first. So I snagged a four pack and was like, mm -hmm. texted, "Hey, I got you guys a four pack <laughs> of toilet paper. Like I like just one like future son in law <laughs> type of a right. award. You know what I mean? It's like I just like scored a like that's insane. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I don't think it's okay. I, I, Picking right right back up where we left off, which is the, the topic at hand tonight. The only thing that I can say is that you take I take value in the, our friendships, but what I've learned in this conversation, and I didn't go into it after our text, but it's that I need to make more of an effort to take some of the best practices and things that I want. You know, like you said, you have people in your life that really stimulate you and 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 get you on the right path, whether it be with your career, your personal life, or whatever. Um it's something that you need to continue to be active on that because if you don't, then it's like they're only there when you need them. Right. And in a normal circumstance, like when I moved to Columbus, I had this conscious or moved away from Columbus to Detroit. I had this conscious conversation with my wife. I said, when I feel like I want to or need to be back down in Columbus, like let's like no restrictions. Like, like even if it's just a short weekend, let's, let's make it happen. In a normal situation, I would be down here three to four times a year at the minimum. You know, and 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 to have that taken away from you in a sense, you know, it, it, it's tough, right? And 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 I think that's the backlash relationship that people are going to have with the world is like they feel as though something's been taking taken from them, and what are they going to do to double down to to right. retain that or get that back in some in some way? Um, so I'm okay. personally going to make a more of a strong commitment, even if it means time away from my kids or my family or whatever it is, to do those things that are important for myself because I the thing that I've learned throughout this is that. It's my job to enable positive behaviors for my kids, um, because if I'm not my best self, then I'm not going to be my best self for them every day. And I know that my wife and I went through this throughout the last year and a half where we never left the house. Um, it wasn't a year and a half, but it feels like it. Shorter, shorter, shorter tempers, uh, quicker, quicker to snap. Um, we're not angry people. We don't, you know, like we, it's just but but you're wound at a certain level of, of tightness that you need to have release. When I told my dad, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do a golf league with the neighbor across the street. I'm so happy that you're doing that for yourself is what he told me. Yeah. Cause you need, you need something, you need, something. You need a release. You need a way to, to remove yourself from the situation. That's clearly not healthy for everyone and, and for anyone that's in it. And so, um, so yeah, so I, I think that that's the, the lesson that I'm taking from this to be able to pick right up is like you said, Steve, to, to intentionally invest in yeah. those things that you hold dear because it makes you a better version of yourself for other aspects of your life. Um, and, and, and so I left, you know, my, my, my job behind this week to come down here and have some fun personal time, but I know that I'm going to be a better manager and a better coworker and a better spouse and a better father because I'm able to, to fulfill a, fill another bucket that has been neglected for so long. Right. I love when you say bucket. <sighs> I don't know what that means. I, I really don't know what that means. Yeah. Jake always has like these buckets to fill. I do. Oh, you, you guys yeah, have heard yeah, my bucket yeah, theory. Yeah. Yes. It's a bucket theory. And uh, yeah. So.
I, I appreciate that. It's always filling, filling certain buckets that that'll make you uh, content, happy, things like that. So it's nice to fill out certain buckets. I need to ask this one thing before we get to closing. Seven remarks. inches. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's for you. Six feet. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? There was a time. So when we moved here from Chicago and um, I remember, you know, it was like my, my dad was an only child and, and his mom moved here with us. Right. And my grandfather passed away. The family is very important to my mom. She still talks to like, especially her sister and, and also uncle or my uncle and her brother. But um, it was, it was very interesting that at least once a week, long distance call when it costs money. And then all of a sudden, technology changed and you call after a certain hour, it's cheaper, right? And then all of a sudden it's calling cards. You know, like you could actually buy at a good rate and you can, you can get all that where it's, it's cheaper, but there's always this effort there. Yep. Friends and family. <laughs> Friends and family, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, Sprint. Yeah. God bless yeah. them when they were actually really doing well for right. themselves. You right. know, they, they had that after 7 p.m. You yeah. Could, you know, yeah, yeah. call for free. Um, they flipped that switch switch do you think that um do you think that the world it's something that just came to my mind this is on the covid thing yeah, yeah. 2020 do you think that they would have been able we would have been able to pull this off not say that because i'm not going to go on that conspiracy theory do you think that we would have been able to handle it the same way if technology was not where it was you could have a zoom call you could mm -hmm. have even long distance calls but if you were literally isolated at your house not even dial up internet. Sure. So you're talking 1980s, talking 90s. early 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I think Do you think be... that, that we would have had the same, yeah. same yeah. response to this, not only taking away the fact that there was a computer in your pocket giving you updates on how many cases a day that were right, happening and everything else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all that stuff. Yeah. Do you think we would have had the same response? Or do you think we would have rolled through it? I. Hmm. Uh, I, Go ahead, Spence. Yeah, I, sorry. It's a it's a fair question. Um, I don't know if it would have been easier or harder. You know, and you know when this whole thing first started, you know, people were doing like house parties, where it's like happy hour on right. Zoom and stuff right. like that. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that lasted a few weeks and things like that. You know, I started playing poker on on online, where we would you know go to a site, but everyone would be on Zoom and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't think we would have had, we would have known what other people were going through at the time. Right. So I think everyone would have had their own individual experiences, but would have no idea. I, th I think that the panic would have probably been less because you wouldn't have had a tracker that said this many people are, you want to have that instant um, refresh on your TV or on your phone that this is what's actually going on. Um, you know, I have no idea. For better or worse, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I haven't done enough. It could have been uh, worse, you know, a situation if we yeah. didn't have it. Yeah, I, I haven't James done enough. James Hopkins had that that whole world and, and country map view before the, the shutdowns, if you remember that. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what was happening in, like, 1919. Like, were people right. freaked out or were people just like, hey, we're going on and, oh, shit, Steve died, you know, the, the right. other week or stuff like that. So. That was a little Right. So I, I don't think there would have been as much of a panic just because we wouldn't have had as much information. But right. I think it was especially for the people That's that were more uh, isolated, you know, like myself, like you, you know, you were with your family. So you had that. But, you know, the people that were on their on their own, on their own, um, I think it was easier. You know, you could stream Netflix. You could you could entertain yourself. But are you, if you wanted to better yourself, you could if you wanted to. Uh, make yourself a better person. You could. Do you remember what the uh, top streaming movie on Netflix was when this I'm time about April? Tiger King. Outbreak. Mm -hmm. That's aggressive. It, it was. was extremely aggressive, it was, and it was the I number one that. streamed uh, movie on yeah. Netflix for I don't know how long. I don't know the stats, but I know I that when that. they released it, I don't even know. If, I don't even know if it's on there anymore. Right. But they put it on there. They got the rights to Outbreak and rode that to the bank. I think to answer your question, Steve, it relates to communication cycle and access to information, not to do it that way in a conspiracy way, but um, I've resigned in a lot of things in life that sometimes, sometimes ignorance is bliss. 
it, it's it's a com- it's a comfortable way to be and to get through something if you don't expose yourself to the information that's available. Not saying it's right or wrong. No judgment there. I'm just saying that sometimes ignorance is bliss. And so let's pretend we were living in the 1980s through our lifetimes and this had happened. Um, I think a lot of similar behaviors would have happened. You would have defined a bubble of the people that you trust sure. to be around. Not that dissimilar to what happened during the, the height of this, right? You, you had your, your, your mental bubble of the people you were comfortable. Or your bubble of friends. Or, exactly yeah, right. Yeah, are, you had your people. And I think that would have been consistent in the same. However, because of the lesser access to information in a prior period of time, um, I think there would have been a lot of blissful ignorance. Honestly, I, I, I concur. I, I think I think because we are so informed and have so much access to live updates of everything, or can go down rabbit holes exactly if you right. want to. Exactly right. Because you have that at your disposal at any moment, um, I think that that almost almost can sometimes perpetuate panic and 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 can can incite that 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 feeling that many of us had over the past year if they hear you're out of toilet paper you better get that toilet paper exactly right um whereas you know otherwise i think you would have read your paper and watched the news or listened to the radio and gotten your daily update but everyone would have got the same update exactly right not individually sourced updates from your rabbit hole that you chose to dive down right. in that moment. Right. And, and so I think that would have been the core <laughs> difference is there probably would have been a little bit more blissful ignorance in the sense of, okay, this is going on. Okay. We need to take this seriously. And then you can go. I, I think there's a lot of positives that come out of it. That, like when you hear about like things like, Oh, there was this murder in another state. That's I think everyone's you know, getting murdered. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, that, that shit happened right. 30 years ago. You just didn't know about it. Same thing right. with UFOs, by the way. Turns I'm, out. No, I mean, I mean, dead serious. Out. There are not more UFO sightings now than there were before. No, like, you just hear about that. Right. There was a newspaper in you know Missouri somewhere in a, in a trailer park that right. there was a, a crazy person that yeah, did there, it. There are not more, now. There's like footage of it, right? And there are not more kids that are getting kidnapped now than there ever were before. That, but because it's more broadcast, people think that you know the world is a more dangerous place than it was, right? All right, let's do uh, closing remarks here on uh, the topic here. Yeah, um, I think, you know, like I said at the beginning, the core of picking back up is how I see these two guys, right? Like I see I see Spencer and, and Steve as people that regardless of the distance or the time, which we just had to experience apart, um, there's a level of, of comfort, um, almost family, a Jace relationship that we have that it allows us to pick back up have real genuine conversations and care and concern for, for each other and what we're going through. Um, but then also make that intentional choice, like to your point earlier, Steve, to choose to value certain things in place of, or, or in addition to other things, because you know how it can make you feel when you are enriched with these connections that you have. And so for me, I, I have pick back up type of relationships with people that I went to college with. I have picked back up relationships of, people that I used to work with. Um, but I think the, the core of this all is, is who you choose to be with and what you choose to do with those moments. And, and not to be too like, you know, you only live once type of mentality. But at the end of the day, like, we only have one shot at this, drink. right? Drink, yeah, it's yeah. gotta be. It yeah, just, drink I, it. I just had to. You're welcome. One, You're welcome. Yeah. But we're all at or nearing 40. <laughs> Right. And at this point in our lives, there's going to be more shit that we have to deal with. Yeah, it probably won't be a global pandemic, but something's going to happen. That's probably going to bring us back together in a way that is not going to be, you know, gentlemen, steak dinners and sunshine and and smiles. It's going to be something shitty. Um, And so what can we do now when we aren't going through those detrimental times? Pandemic, whatever it is, I don't even want to list it because it sucks. To, to, to do better with what we have now, right? right. And, and, I, and I think, like, I personally want to make that commitment to you guys as friends, but for myself, that I want to do better to fill that bucket, you're welcome, um, and, and, and care, for, care for myself and the things that I personally value. And whether that means I, I come down and sit in one of those pop-up chairs in the podcast every so often because it feels more comfortable to travel and do those things or 
or we, we make it a point to, to get together more frequently or you call me the next time you're actually in Michigan, you fuck. I'm sorry. Um, he, he, why did you call him? He was yeah. looking at why you. Why did you yeah. call him, bro? We all know yeah, yeah, that yeah. I don't travel. On the audio. Uh, <laughs> but, no, but just the same. I, I think I think that's the lesson that I'm taking from this is that if I still feel this way about certain relationships that I have in my life, then what am I going to do about it? Yeah. And how am I going to choose to do better or do different? Not not from a place of guilt, but from a place of genuine want and and need for myself. Right. And and so I, I, I personally feel like I, I need you guys in my life and not to get emotional or anything, but I, I, I want to make a better effort. And I think if anything has taught me anything over this past year is that it's on me to do that. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah, you sacrifice one thing to do another thing. But at the end of the day, you're probably going to be happy that you did because, you know, I'm saying it here now in front of the millions and millions of bourbon podcast fans. Bourbon and, wow. Bourbon and BS podcast. Fans. That's right. That's Thanks right. to our sponsors. Sorry. <laughs> Nate, do you want to have closing remarks since you're not on this? No, because no, mine was going to be a different take on the topic. So okay. Nate uh, didn't want to talk to you guys. Go ahead, Spencer. <laughs> I'll speak. I'll speak for. I'll speak for Nate here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the hell you win. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, one, I, I truly enjoy the second cigar. By the way, uh, Romeo Julieta. What, yes. what was the the Reserva Real Nicaragua? Fantastic cigar. By the like way. Talk Fair enough. Mike. Yeah. God, so Nate said he liked it more, Thank but you. not as. Uh, but he thought that the first cigar went better. But uh, I, you know, Roman. Shannon, how many times have you been like scolded for not talking to the mic? I'm can't, telling. Can't you. hear you. Can't hear. You. <laughs> <laughs> Got ahead, um, going back to to where things, you know, uh, Steve and I are kind of in completely different industries, but kind of similar. Where you know, I'm in the construction industry, and you know, our, our business never really stopped. Steve's yeah. business never really stopped. So we were out and about. And you, you actually bought from me yes. during that. Yeah. Time. So we did the mask in the parking lot, and you know, sort I, of. I, yeah, and I, I I remember that man. It, it wasn't that that long ago, but I can't tell you know the the joy that I have from whether it's a magical switcher or, or whatever. Um, you know, I took an Uber over here, and I didn't wear, I haven't worn a mask in in a week just because that's when Ohio's stuff went away that hey basically did you wear one in the uber so in the uber you have to wear a mask and i was like man i haven't worn a mask and it, it just felt mm -hmm. it, it felt face it's, it's i put it in my pocket just for for the uber but it, it felt so uh familiar just to wear a mask everywhere you went and then when i put it on for the first time today it just felt like a, an oddity so i'm excited for going back to where uh things were you know i hope we're, we're better as a society and you know all, all that type of stuff um but I, I'm optimistic that things can go right back to where they were. And hopefully we're better than where we were. Hopefully we appreciate these things. Hopefully when people go to sporting events or concerts or things like that, you know, we'll appreciate that stuff more. Tony. Go ahead. No, you're good. Um, I know I'm good. I was talking to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just a joy to be able to to do even something as simple as this podcast before that not have to worry about, you know, being six feet apart and all, all of that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, I value everyone's friendship. I value being able to be on this again. Um, you know, it's over 10, less than 15, whatever it is, episodes to be on this. And I'm just, yeah. just grateful. But I am I'm going to. I'm an optimist with this. You know, there's two ways to look at this. So, you know, half full, half empty. But my dad always said, uh, problems uh, don't go away. They just change. So the problems that we're dealing with now are very different problems than we were dealing with a year and a half ago. And that's okay. But I think the people that are able to adapt to these situations are the people that will come up on top. And Steve, you know, you've done a hell of a job of adapting your business, your world to this stuff over the past year and a half. And I hope that you will continue the practices that you did to survive through this that will help your business thrive through the rest of this. But uh, truly grateful. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. And to you and Wilk and Tony just wanted to get on the camera, apparently. Um, picking up where you left off, pick right up, however you want to say it. COVID, year, whatever you want to call it. Friendships, relationships. Um, it actually reminds me of, as we're talking about a lot of this stuff is <clears throat> there's a time in, in everyone's life that, that brings people together. And this is going to sound very, maybe morbid. Um, it's a morbid. 
Yeah. Don't wait for the funeral. Um, you know, if you know, I hadn't seen Wilk in, in two years, you know, when he would come down to Columbus, probably is if, if, and, and vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. Is that if a, a close person in your life passes away, brings a lot of people together. Yep. And a lot of the conversations at a funeral is the fact that we haven't spent enough time together. Life takes us in different directions. And it's not always a bad thing that, that life takes you in different directions, but you should come out of that funeral. You should come out of 2020. You should come out of whatever it is when you reconnect with someone that when I talk about like in, in, in previous podcasts that best practices that you combine with reality, it's that you, you should be more active. Because all you're going to do is, is that not saying that, you know, there's a relationship that life does take, take control sometimes, but there is always a sense of regret at a funeral that you didn't spend enough time with either the person that passed away or the person that you are connected with at like the reason you're at that. It's their father, it's their, their mother, it's their, you know, someone in life that, that, that passed away too soon. We know this, and yet we choose to to not change the way we live our everyday life, whether it be from comfort, complacency, or just pure laziness, or sometimes selfishness, but we all realize the importance and the impact that something like that has on your life, at least for a very short period of time. So when you talk about, you know, coming out of this too, Spencer, um, of 2020, and we got... did dive down that rabbit hole a little bit. If you don't actually change the way you live your everyday life after all the shit that we've gone through and now that the magical switch has been flipped. That's on you. That's on you. And and you owe it to yourself to really change the way that you wake up and live your life. You know, when you have a health scare or whatever, the doctor says like, oh, you know, you had a heart attack, whatever it might be. Um, or you need to stop eating the way you're eating. You need to stop smoking you need to stop drinking, you need to stop doing any of this stuff. You, you really owe it to yourself that you want to make a, a voluntary choice of how you live your everyday life. So I guess my closing remark big time is, is that, uh, and unfortunately, I know at the end of this podcast, especially live, we don't have a whole lot of viewers. So I hope people actually listen to this is that you don't don't wait to the funeral. Don't wait till a pandemic hits. Don't wait till, you know, the shit hits the fan that it's too late that you really, really spend time spending time with people that matter because i think that you're going to enjoy your everyday life in the the finite time that you have on this earth so that you don't get people together when you're the one that they're getting getting together for because you won't be able to enjoy it anymore i like that my friend yeah so guys cheers tony's getting restless Thank you very much, Wilk, for bringing this stuff down and being Absolutely. here. Spencer being here. Josh Bentley in the audience is a surprise guest. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nate, thank you, Dustin, for being here. Shannon and everyone else and all you guys out there. I hope you guys share, like, and review. And uh, I enjoy this conversation. Guys, cheers. So, first two times I was on, I didn't realize that there was music going. <laughs> <laughs> We're still live. Still say say something. Still live. Say something. Something.